We will be live in seconds and uh, got a lot to cover today. I'm going to uh, go over these incredible, incredible speeches that President Trump gave yesterday. They were both spectacular, no doubt about it. But of course, the Christian Day of Visibility that uh, President Trump was talking about, that's going to be the main focus. I mean, that was just so important. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Absolutely. Two seconds. On the air since 1977, it's the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. All righty, it sure is. Coming up on six minutes after the hour, it is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. My name is Brian Craig. And you are listening to the longest-running radio show in the state of Florida, the Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. we got a lot to cover. Did you guys catch Trump yesterday? Gave two speeches, one in Michigan, one in Wisconsin. They were both spectacular. And let me just play the soundbite that I'm going to be talking about here because this is the most important thing that came out of it. And here's the president yesterday. It's not working. Hold on. What is going on? Why is it not working? So all the buildup, and it's not working. I just played it a second ago off the air. Hold on. Well, I'll play it in a second. I lost my internet connection. That's why it's doing it. I'll pull it up. But the Christian Day of Visibility that President Trump was talking about, and the importance of it is, you know, it was interesting. We got a call at the very tail end of yesterday's show, the last five or 10 minutes of yesterday's show, there was a woman who called in, black woman, African-American woman, and she said she's voting for Trump. She's voted Democrat her entire life, and she's voting for Trump. Okay, I got the clip in the internet all working. And her main reason when I talked to her as to why she was voting for Trump was because of, of this thing that Biden did at the White House on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day, the Transgender Visibility Day. And that really has set off uh, a domino effect of red pilling around this country. And, you know, here's, here's the thing. When it comes to presidential elections, there's, there's a pattern I've noticed over the years, and you see this happen time and time again. It's for the most part, it's the left, but it works, you know, when, when you have liberals, when you have a Democrat in office and they go so far to the left, however far the left is for that time, you typically have a conservative who's very popular, Lyndon Johnson, very liberal. And then what happened? We had Richard Nixon elected for two terms. And then the left, they got radical again and they forced the president and the vice president out of office, Richard Nixon and Spiro Agnew. They plugged in a deep state Republican establishment hack, President Ford. And then what happened? You had Jimmy Carter. And Jimmy Carter, like Joe Biden, was incredibly incompetent, incredibly stupid, and was doing a lot of really liberal, stupid things in the day. I'm going to go through them all. And then what happened? We had eight years of Reagan. Then we had four of Bush. You know, then Bill Clinton, who was um, just a degenerate morally, I mean, just took things so far to the left. People don't realize because it's been so long. And those of us who went, lived through it, a lot of you have forgotten about it because it's so long ago. But he uh, was such a, a, a sexual deviant. It was really, it was terrible. I remember there was this take your daughter to work uh, day. At, at, remember, they, they, they still do that, I'm sure. And w I remember we were doing the show. This was during the Clinton, um, Monica Lewinsky stuff. And everyone at the radio station had brought their daughters to work. And these were like little kids from elementary school. And they were giving them tours of the radio station. And when they would bring children into the studio... We would have to, and we'd announce this, okay, there are children president, present, and since there are children present in the studio, we can no longer talk about the president of the United States. 
It was that bad. And I'm not kidding. I didn't make that up. That's true. And it wasn't a joke. It just happened. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. So then we, you know, we had this left-wing degenerate, and then it gave us two years of Bush. Then, you know, uh, eight years of a radical Obama who was incredibly radical. He still is because so much of what we're dealing with today is Obama who's still running the show, right? And uh, what, what did that bring us? Trump coming down the escalator and walking into a historic victory. So now we have this four-year window of not just the most radical presidency of any of our lifetimes. I mean, this is some radical stuff, right? I mean, I'm not going to go through list. You know what's going on here right now, you know. And what is that doing? Well, on top of the radicalism, as sexually corrupt as Bill Clinton was, this guy isn't just got all these radicals around him. Biden is just a financial deviant. I mean, he's just as, he's probably the most corrupt person ever to be president of the United States. And this, this hardcore liberal radicalism that we're suffering through right now, and we are suffering, is leading to Trump. And that's why so many people are being red-pilled. So many people that never voted for Republicans in their life, like the nice lady that called at the end of yesterday's show, and, um, you know, were anti-Trump before, are now voting for him. And this the, the, last week, Biden did two things that were devastating. One, having the fundraiser with President Clinton and President Obama during the funeral of Officer Diller, who was killed by a Democrat in New York City. In New, and they had the fundraiser in New York City. That was devastating to them. And then this Transgender Day of Visibility on the holiest day of the Christian calendar, which is Easter, Resurrection Day. And it's just... Phew, caused a massive red pilling. Okay, so President Trump, this is in Wisconsin yesterday, made a very important declaration. And what the hell was Biden thinking when he declared Easter Sunday to be Trans Visibility Day? Such total disrespect to Christians and November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know, it's going to be called Christian Visibility Day when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. Okay, Christian Visibility Day, November 5th. And you hear the crowd go nuts. And everyone's talking about this online, Christian Visibility Day. And, you know, we have a lot of problems in this country. But morally, uh, this is, you know, we got, this is the last days of Rome so far as morality with these Democrats today, especially after what they did on, on Easter Sunday. And what we're missing is we don't have any Pat Robertsons now. We don't have any Jerry Falls. We don't have any national conservative leaders like we've had uh, throughout the last 40 or 50 years in this country. And President Trump is, is going to be on double duty He's not only going to be the president and commander in chief, that's double duties, but that's one duty, but he's also going to become the Christian coalition type Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson in his second term. And that is what we need. You know, we don't have moral leadership in this country. And, you know, sometimes I'll talk about, you know, when it, when it comes to uh, Hunter and his sister, I say, you know, if you want to know what, what, a, what a man is like, look at his children. And our children are reflections of us. And you see with his kids, look at them. They're both junkies and degenerates, especially Hunter. And, yeah, that's, that's the way it is. And, you know, it's evil. And we, we need to get back to traditional family values. And like in a family... You know, he's the head of his family, Joe Biden, and the family are what? Sexual deviants. They have every uh, vice that I know of other than gambling in that family. They're all financially corrupt and criminal, even his siblings, Joe Biden, through him, you know. And, you know, you see the effect that a corrupt criminal man has on his family as the head of the family. Well, 
what's going on in the, he's the head of America right now. I know Obama's running, this person's running, but you know, you don't need to split hairs on this. The president sets the tone for the country like a father sets the tone in the family or a wife sets the tone in the house. Like remember house swap? So when President Trump comes back for his second and non-consecutive term, we're going to have morality back in the White House, and that's going to filter down and throughout this country of ours. So we're going to take our first break. When we get back, there is a lot to cover. Uh, we're going to go through President Trump's speeches yesterday and a whole bunch more. All right. My name is Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. Our number, if you'd like to call in, please do, whether you agree or disagree. The number is toll-free, 465 2631 888-465-2631. We'll be right back. Don't. Yeah, this year, I haven't worn this shirt in a while. I actually have two of these. It's George Washington, and the hat says, Make America. Pretty, pretty clever. Because, you know, for you liberals out there, you can't make America great again. He actually made America. I thought that was kind of funny. It's going to be 91 degrees today, so I thought I'd wear a, uh, I thought I'd wear a t-shirt. Okay, let me get my audio stuff queued up here. Okay. Oh man, you know, people send me music and stuff they produce sometimes, and uh, someone sent me, I haven't listened to it yet, they sent me uh, some music, and they sent it to me on a, on a CD and a cassette tape. When's the last time you've seen a cassette tape? And this, isn't, this is uh, a new cassette tape, it's still in the wrapper. CD too is in the wrapper, neither of these have been opened. But when's the last time you've seen a, a cassette tape that was still wrapped? Right? I haven't seen one that was still in the plastic in years. I wish I would have kept my cassettes. I got rid of all my cassettes. I wish I'd have kept them. Cassettes are kind of having a having a bit of a comeback.
All right, welcome back, one and all. Call us on hold, stand by. You know, uh, all this Powerball talk in the news. And, you know, talking about the lottery is like the number one rule of radio. Don't talk about the lottery. It really is. I, you probably never even heard me mention the lottery before. Um, but I, I, I am going to mention it uh, in relation to this, okay? And I learned this from Jupiter Joe Thomas. I did not know this. That, you know, your lottery winnings, you know, if you take that installment plan as opposed to the lump sum, do you know the lottery winnings are in an annuity? I had no idea because that money's safe and it earns income. So you get the winnings. If you don't take the payout, the state or whoever is running that lottery, they have your money in an annuity and they're earning income off of, uh, off of your lottery winnings. Annuities are safe. I also did not know, I learned this from, from Jupiter Joe Thomas as well, that pension plans are in annuities because they're safe. And another thing I learned from Jupiter Joe Thomas was that you can pass annuities down to your children. It's a great way, or grandchildren, whoever else you want. It's a great way to pass down family. You know, you leave your house, you know, you leave your cars, you leave your assets, you leave your gold, you leave your, you leave your jewelry. But you can also leave an annuity. I, I had no idea. So, you know, annuities are amazing on top of the fact that unlike you know, stock market, you know, your 401k and all that stuff, you're not risking your principal. Your money is safe, which is huge. And when you're retired, you can get income from that annuity as well. And I talked to Joe Thomas yesterday, and, you know, we have listeners all over South Florida that have been calling in and around the country as well that have been taking advantage of this no-charge phone consultation. You know, he's a retirement expert, and he's a financial planner, and when you call, tell him what your situation is. Everyone has a different situation. Maybe you already are retired. Maybe you plan on retiring at some point in your life. I know I plan on being retired at some point in my life. I don't think I'll ever be fully retired. I'll do a semi-retirement thing one day. But I'll tell you, an annuity, boy, that little extra income can make that retirement a whole lot better. So take advantage, like so many other of our listeners have, take advantage of the no-charge consultation with Joe Thomas. His number is 561 561- Seven four three zero nine ninety nine five six one seven four three zero nine ninety nine. If you miss the number, just go to his website. It's easy to remember, jupiterjoe.com, jupiterjoe.com. All right, if you're on hold, hang in there. Um, so there's a lot of red pilling going on. And, you know, people hear red pilling all the time. If you don't know where that comes from, it's from the Matrix, right? When Morpheus tells Keanu Reeves you can take, is, it's the green, is it the red pill and the blue pill? Right? You take the blue pill, you're back in the matrix. You take the red pill, you get to see the real world. That's where the red pilling comes from. And there's so much of it. That's what that nice lady that called at the end of the show. And did you notice, I've been telling you guys, when a Democrat tells you that they're voting for Trump, don't give them grief. And it was, it was interesting. I, you know, I was telling her some things about Joe Biden. She didn't know. I said, did you know that Joe Biden gave the eulogy to a Klansman at his funeral? And she says, I never heard that before. And I said, yeah, I said, look it up. Senator Robert Byrd, who was a member of the Ku Klux Klan, when he died, Joe Biden gave the eulogy at his funeral. She says, I had never heard that before. You know, a lot of these things that you might take for granted that everyone knows, most people don't because the mainstream media don't tell them. There's so much red pilling going on. And I came across this yesterday. Um, this is a, a liberal girl who's like in her 20s. She's one of these kind of girls that has the green and blue hair, you know, kind of goth, piercings in weird places and, 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 and stuff. And um, yeah, and she's flipped. She's flipped to Trump. And uh, she was interviewed, and listen to what she said. It's absolutely amazing. If you could give President Trump, or if you were able to, to talk to President Trump tonight, what would you like him to know? I would like to say, Mr. President, I am so sorry for believing the lies that the mainstream media has just projected on me and that I felt for and I believed. I stand by you. I love you. I thank you for what you're doing for this country. And I'm so sorry that I just took it for granted and I did not even see it. But I do see it now. And you have one more supporter standing beside you and praying for you. Well, that's astounding. That's astounding. I mean, completely red-pilled. 
And again, she's one of those blue hair, green hair, goth girls. That's how bad things are, and that's how wonderful things are going in this country. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, um, it's Dave, formerly of Huntington Beach. I think we've talked before on a few occasions. Okay. And now moved to um, the Harbor City, which is Melbourne in Florida. Oh, right up, right up I-95 from me. Right, exactly. Are you, I know you have one of 6.1 or 9 that's in Martin County. Are you putting in the transfer up for the work? No, uh, we're, we're on one hundred six. We're on one. We're on one hundred six point nine in Martin County, but uh, that's our that's our northernmost radio station. So you got to listen to us on iHeartRadio or something like that. Yeah. So, anyway, cool. I, and the other question is, I can't remember. Were you talking about the the Singapore ship that ran into the Francis Scott Key Bridge? By the way, do you know how many people don't even know who Francis Scott Key was? But that's another story. Anyways, um, but. Did you say that they have filed a liability limit of forty million dollars? No, that was an, that was that was somebody else on another show. You're cheating on me. You're you're a you're a, an, a you're a radio adulterer. No, that was another radio show. I know you've been walking through it. That's 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 too that's too cerebral, man. That's too, talking about math and everything. That's terminally boring. No, but what I have said though is that the two minutes prior to the collision on the ship's black box uh, are blank. So uh, I don't know what they're... Co- the, the audio before and after is fine, but the two minutes prior to the collision are gone. And, no- and, notice, and notice how, by the way, that entire story has all but disappeared from the media. So it's not just an accident or the power supply or whatever? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. There's, there's certainly some questions. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But I, I think it's odd that the two minutes leading up to the collision on the black box on the ship are blank. Well, did you get a chance to watch the whole tape of the collision? And, and at, just after the collision, mm-hmm. there's like um, a bunch of black smoke coming from the tower that... Yeah. All the way across the bridge, it looks a little suspicious. It does. It does. The only possible explanation that I can think of is some places put other municipal. Uh, no, and 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 how how when did that accident? Ha- when was that collision last week? I forgot what day it was, but I I haven't seen identified on television the captain or the pilot from that harbor, which is very unusual. When there's an accident of a sh- like this of a ship or any type of mass transportation. You see who the driver is of the either the ship or the plane or the train, and there's nothing. Well, that's true, and I think you pointed out on the Exxon Valdez, everybody knew who everybody was the next day. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, and why is this place? I mean, they should have been boarded, and it's it's always interesting when part of you know the black boxes are missing, like we always see, like. Oh uh, God! What's one of the? Anyway, it's one of those crazy pilots that unfortunately had a mental illness. I don't remember that happening before, and uh, I I don't remember the black box being blank before on anything. Like, well, there were two flights. I watched the um, the plane crash uh, show that's on often, and on the two ones that there was the Singapore Airlines, I think. Anyways, and the guy got the co-pilot, or got the co-pilot to get out of the cockpit. It was the pilot who apparently had mm. millions of dollars of gambling debt and decided to take everybody. Are you talking about the TWA Flight 800 out of New York? That the Egyptian, or the, I'm sorry, the Egyptian with the Egyptian, oh, the Singapore? Oh, yeah, that, yeah. But that's not, a, that's not an American uh, thing. You know, when you talk about plane, we got to keep it to the United States. I can't go to Singaporean, air, third world airlines, you know what I mean? Yes, but isn't this a Singapore ship? Anyway, but so what the guy did is he pulled the breaker on the way out the door. Mm. And, and that'd be new. So it stopped the cockpit, cockpit voice recorder. Wow, that, that, that ability should not even exist. I know. They, they, have, they have too much control in there. So anyways, but... Well, listen, it's, it's, good, to, it's good to hear from you. i got to run for the break, but thanks for the call. All right, take care. You know, that's so common. You know, that's really a cool thing, that call. You know, and this is this is something that I think is pretty unique to this show. Okay, listeners move, but they take us with them, and it's it's so amazing to me 
uh, when people leave town and they move to all kinds of places around America. He's, he's up in Melbourne. I haven't been to Melbourne in years. Um, had a very strange incident happen to me there when I was like 19, which I'm not going to get into. But um, very... Ugh. Not going to get into it. But um, he moved to Melbourne. He's out of range of our signal. He's listening on iHeartRadio. And I hear from listeners like that all the time. They moved to California. They're listening to us. They, they, they're in New York. They're listening to us. So that's awesome that they take the show with them on their move. All right. If you're on hold, stand by. We'll be right back. Make it. I know, pretty cool, huh? All right. Welcome, everyone. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Well, thank you, Charmaine, and Jack, whose last name I'm not going to say. So I, I know I asked this earlier, but I, I, uh, I, I didn't see in the chat because I wasn't looking. The, a listener sent me their album on cassette, and it's totally right. What is the last time you've seen a cassette tape that was new in the wrapper that's not been opened before? When's the last time? Look at that. I, almost, I know they sent it to me to listen to, but I almost feel bad opening it. I haven't seen a cassette tape that was still in the plastic, I don't know, how many years? I have a cassette player right here next to me. Let's see if it'll reach. I've got an old boombox radio. And it has a, I don't know, can you guys see it? Yeah, it has a cassette tape in it. I don't know if it works. I don't know if I want to put it in there. Let's see, it's got a cassette player in it. Don't open it. They sent it to me to open and listen to their music. I used to buy... Um, cassette singles. And if you ever buy a cassette single, it had um, it have one song on the front, but it, there was a song on the flip side. So on the cassette singles, you actually got two songs. I had a Ford Explorer that I got rid of a couple years ago. It had oh, a lot of miles on it. It had a cassette de deck in it. I'm not sure how to say that. This is this is um, obviously an old. This is a parody album. Guns and it's it's a it's a parody of Guns and Roses. Guns and is that Char Roses? Everybody's got a Jewish mom, and then like some of the songs on it. But everybody's got a Jewish mom is the main track. Uh, Don't worry, keep kosher. That must be a parody parody on Don't worry, be happy. Born to Shop, that must be a takeoff of Born to Live. Mish I forgot how to say this, Kai. What's the name of the Jewish wine? Meshev Manischewitz. Manischewitz wine, that's probably a parody of red wine, which I love red wine. Red, red wine make me feel so fine. You keep me rocking all of the time. Red, red wine all of the time.
Yeah, it's Catskills humor. That's exactly right. It's Catskills humor. Everybody's got a Jewish mom. I wonder what uh, that's a parody of. Everybody's got a Jewish mom. What do you think that's a parody of? Oh, yeah, I used to make mixtapes off the radio. Absolutely. All right, welcome back, everyone. Call us on old standby. I was talking during the break about this. Listeners send me, you know, we have talent talent in this audience. But listeners on occasion will send me uh, albums, songs they've written. And usually they'll email me like an MP3. But someone had sent me both a cassette tape and a CD. And this cassette tape, is the, this is the first cassette tape I've seen, I can't even remember the last time I've seen a cassette tape that's actually still sealed in the store plastic wrapper. And it's a parody album, and uh, it's, it's uh, Jewish humor, I get, yeah, Catskills humor, and I, I do have a cassette deck here in the radio studio, but it has not been used in many years, and I would be afraid to put a cassette in it. It may not work. I don't know, do you th- there any other... Uh, Cassette decks at the radio station? I don't know. But um, the album, it's a, t- it's a parody off of Guns N' Roses. And the title of the album, I'm not sure how to pronounce the second word, but I, I, it's the same kind of logo that Guns N' Roses used to have on their albums. I used to love Guns N' Ro- Roses. It's called Guns and Show Roses. And the lead track is Everyone's Got a Jewish Mom. And I'm looking at the songs on the back, right? Don't worry, keep kosher. That's got to be a parody of Don't Worry, Be Happy. Manischewitz Wine. That's got to be a parody of Red, Red Wine, Red Wine. The rest of them, I don't know. But uh, if I can find a cassette deck that I can trust, I will play it. I might have one at home in the garage, actually. I have some some older... I I don't throw away old radios. I keep them. You know, I know there's an 8-track player here at the radio station. Can you believe there's an 8-track player? There is, in someone's office. All right, let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Richie. I have to say, I have to apologize to you. I think Steve Kane has to apologize to you. I think a lot of the calls have to apologize to you. I I, I, got to tell you something. Sometimes, you know, you 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 do your research and your news and your site. The news cycles go by so fast. But there are times where you take certain stands on certain topics. And then you're attacked. I attacked you. Steve attacked you. A lot of people attacked you. And that was that was this Ukraine crap that, that's going on here for two years now. And there was a... You were right all along. Mm-hmm. I, I, heard, I heard a guy from the CIA. He was a spy. He, he, he actually... He was interviewed. They... This, this administration, okay, they pulled out of Afghanistan. They pulled out because they wanted to be like Trump when he eliminated ISIS, because they wanted a diversion. The Afghanistan thing to pull out was a diversion away from the election that had just happened. And he wanted to. Yeah. And, he, and the state, of, and you hit that right on it. He, he pulled out and to, to divert with that complete debacle. With that, and you said, we'll go from one to another. You mm-hmm. right away. He actually, he actually, it's a proxy war with Russia. He actually started this thing on purpose because he wanted to, because of the Afghanistan flop. Yeah. With good, I mean, one to the other. And you said we were going from one to the other. You had it right on the head right away. Well, okay. Now I will, I will say while it's it's not open phones, I will, I'll if you, but 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 you're apologizing to me, so I'll let that fly. And uh, your apology is accepted. <laughs> we don't even realize, and now they're getting tired of Afghanistan, and we will. Uh, not Afghanistan. 
of Ukraine, we realize it's a dead, dead, dead thing. And well, you know, I was, I was, you know, I tell you guys, if you want to know what's going on in Ukraine, look at Pavlo in Ukraine on on YouTube, and I and I check him out all the time, and he's a twenty something year old guy that is a uh, YouTuber in Ukraine, and. Um, you know, it's it's uh, perfectly fine over there. If you go and watch, he was just uh, he was just at a street festival with his um, brawless girlfriend, and uh, you don't see any bombs or planes or anything. And he just he's kind of like a lifestyle vlogger and goes around on vac- his life's a vacation. And when he's not on vacation, he's renovating his house uh, in Ukraine. We're right on the head. Now we're going. Now the Israel thing is a diversion away from that. And 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 they were, Milley was talking about the withdrawal that he turned on Biden after he got out. Mm-hmm. Actually, said it was the State Department that pulled that crap. Yeah, these people are devious. I mean, not for nothing. Not well, you know, here's you know here's here here's the thing. I hate to say it, but you know, Oliver Stone was so right in so many ways. You know about JFK. I mean, how many died in Vietnam? Fifty-eight thousand Americans died, right, or on the wall. You know, and and I know we don't like to think of it this way because we don't want to, you know, lessen the sacrifice that those fifty eight thousand plus Americans on the on the wall gave. But that war was for the military industrial complex, and and Lyndon Johnson, like George Bush, he's burning. Lyndon Johnson is burning in hell. He is a murderer of not just the fifty eight thousand Americans, but how many uh, Southeast Asians died too because of that. And it's just like George Bush, who started these endless wars in the Middle East. I mean, these are just, they're, they're, they're corrupt war criminals who are doing this for the military industrial complex. I wonder how many of our other wars were the same. Well, they just had a budget just was passed by, by, by all of them, right? And, and big budgets go to the military. Now, we're not involved in a war. Why was there such a major increase? We are involved in all these proxy wars. We're fighting Russia right now. We are in World War Street, folks, and we got a, we got a, a guy in there that's completely out of it. I mean, everything that the United States has done, I was, I, this guy said that we look at Putin like he's a boogeyman here, but not everywhere else in the world, Putin is looked at totally different. You know, we're, 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 we're spoon fed all this crap. And, uh, you know, and then he, right away, they, and then, and then when the and then when the Republicans cut funding to Ukraine or even talk about it, what the what what Biden does is the Pentagon give what they already have to Ukraine, which forces the Congress to replenish the supplies for the Pentagon. It's 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 really bad, and and it's 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 it's, it's I don't know how these people live with themselves that so many people are die just so their kids can be set up for life on. Coke and hookers. I, I don't understand. People don't realize just how many people have died with right. And by the way, right now, uh, Putin says he, he, he's ready to talk peace as long as he keeps those two, Crimea and the other thing. The bottom line is he did that two years ago. He hasn't changed his position. The United States is switching off now to, uh, to Israel. And you got Schumer calling for the other. We have our nose in everybody's business. We have our nose in South American business. We have our nose in... Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, Richie, a- apology accepted. Thank you for the call. Uh, now, I want to tell you guys, uh, first, one thing people ask me all the time when I talk about my pillow product, I get a lot of people, oh, you have all this stuff because they send it to you. Every my pillow product I have, I have bought. Now, they do call sometimes and offer to send me this or that, and I always have it. <laughs> it's just the way it is. So all these things I talk about, I have, I bought it, bought it with our promo code Kane. The only thing I did not buy with the promo ca- code Kane was my first my pillow because they weren't with us yet. Okay? But out of all the my pillow products, the one that is the most life-changing is the mattress topper, which is as much as 50% off, depending on which one you get. You know, and I have them on my beds at home. I've been sleeping on the My Pillow mattress toppers for years. It comes in every mattress size. It turns your whole mattress into a My Pillow. It's life changing. In fact, I, I've got one. I, uh, I sent out to my daughter in in California. It is a life changer uh, for you because if you think you've gotten a good night's sleep in the past, you have it until you get that My Pillow mattress topper. I slept on it the first night. I woke up the next day. It's it's unbelievable. It's just. 
you, you, you are in a state of bliss in your sleep that you've never experienced before. And the MyPillow mattress toppers with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, are up to 50% off and free shipping because it's free shipping on orders of $75 or more. So it's free shipping on the mattress toppers plus the 50% off. So it's a massive savings. So use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com or call toll-free 1-800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879. Promo code Kane. We'll be right back. The cold, hard truth. Uh, you can actually. Um, I've um, my guest bed is a cheap bed and a cheap mattress, and yeah. It, and um, if you have a lumpy, bumpy mattress and you put that mattress topper on, you'll find you don't need a new mattress. Mattresses are expensive, man. A mattress is a major, major purchase. So no, before you buy a new mattress, get that my pillow mattress topper. Oh, mattresses are insane. I, I've had m multiple cars that cost less than a mattress. We'll be back after this commercial. All right, call us on hold, stand by. Um, I want to just talk for a couple minutes about Ron DeSantis, okay? And, of course, like President Trump, I was a big supporter of him until he betrayed President Trump and all of us who voted for him. Ron DeSantis has been doing, a, in, in the last week or two, a lot of very good things and conservative things. He made uh, this squatting law he passed, made it a felony. Uh, the squatting and you know squatters what they do when you know they after they've dry they, they just don't of course they do not take care of the property they're squatting in but when it gets close to being tossed out they start doing damage breaking windows breaking the ac and those are felony counts now counts uh when they start doing destruction on the property and and over the course of time uh squatting will fade away in florida for the most part you know, and uh, there's a lot of squatters in Florida. You know, one thing about uh, uh, 
the, these squatters. They're the, they're the lowest of the low, but they know the law like a, like a lawyer when it comes to these things. And, and word will spread in squat. And that, that's a great thing he did. He, um, um, yesterday, Ron DeSantis passed this thing, uh, the toll relief program for, for tolls on the turnpike. And that's a big deal. I'm a little confused on it. Um, and, and, you know, I drive the turnpike pretty much every day and, and it's expensive, you know, and the Florida turnpike, when they first built the Florida turnpike and it became a toll road, people were pissed in Florida and they said, this sucks. We don't want to pay. And when the, when the state built the Florida turnpike, they said, don't worry when, when the cost of constructing the turnpike and when the construction is over, and, the, and we recoup the money for the construction on the turnpike, the tolls will stop. And a lot of people said, oh, okay. Well, when's the government going to stop taking a tax, right? Because tolls are tax. So if you drive on the Florida turnpike, and I've been driving it since before I could drive, I've been riding on it, um, the construction never ends, right? It's endless construction. This construction they're doing uh, southbound up in the Lake Worth area has been going on, it seems like, for 150 years. What the hell are they doing? It's worse than that, that road on Palmetto Park Road in East Boca. But anyway, um, so they, the, the construction never ends, so the tolls have never ended. And DeSantis did something yesterday, um, the toll relief program. I'm a little confused on what it means, but if, if you... If you uh, go through toll plazas 35 times or more a month. You'll receive a 50% credit to your SunPass account. And I don't know if that's just a one-time thing or if that's every month. And I drive the turnpike to the radio station every day. Sometimes I take 95. I hate taking 95 because it's, you know, I like to take the turnpike. It's a little faster and, you know. But I take the I-95 sometimes to save on the tolls because I drive on the turnpike so much and so far through so many tolls, it adds up. And I didn't realize how much it was costing me until I got a new debit card that wasn't connected to my SunPass account and I got the, the, the toll by plate in the mail. I was like, holy smokes, I'm spending that much on the turnpike. So I don't know if this 50% credit is just one month or is it going to be every... Well, that's a good thing. He did, Ron DeSantis, did, this is a good thing what he did for the turnpike. Hopefully not everybody learns about it because it'll just make the traffic heavier. But that's a good thing he did. The, the squatters bill he did, that was a good thing. And he's, so he's done two very good things in the last two weeks, Ron DeSantis. With that being said, we still cannot trust him. Now, you know, if he winds up running for president and is the nominee, I don't know what will happen in the future. But hes you can never trust Ron DeSantis. He betrayed us like nobody's business when he ran against President Trump. And he said terrible things about Donald Trump. The first time I got pissed at DeSantis is when Bragg was going to uh, come down here and, and arrest Trump at Mar-a-Lago. And DeSantis didn't even do anything about it. He could have uh, contested the extradition, and he didn't. And that's the Stormy Daniels case. Okay, that was the first one of these things, you know, and I remember talking at the time, I said, if Carrie Lake was our governor, she'd be standing at the gate of Mar-a-Lago and they'd have to take her, or arrest her, you know, but not DeSantis. So he's doing good things, but we still can't trust him. And there's, there's a lot of DeSantis supporters that are conservative talkers that are telling you that he just defeated Disney in the last week. Um, because Disney dropped this lawsuit. Um, that's not true. Um, Ron DeSantis and, De you know, I follow this because I like the theme parks, okay? I like Disney. I like Universal Studios, especially like Universal Studios and Halloween Horror Nights and all that stuff. And uh, I might be getting, an, I, I let my pass expire to Universal. I might renew it. Uh, next time I go up there, the Halloween Horror Nights is amazing. I go every year with my daughter pretty much, and it's, it's, it's super cool at Universal. But anyway, um, Ron DeSantis did not have some big victory against Disney this week, this last week, with this lawsuit. He came, they came to a mutual agreement where both sides got a lot of what they wanted. It was a very peaceful mediation 
that Disney had, Bob Iger, who runs Disney, and Ron DeSantis. It wasn't some hardcore thing. And Ron DeSantis had a press conference about it, and what he said was very interesting and uh, backs up with what I've been predicting will be Ron DeSantis' future. So they came to a mutual agreement where both sides are happy. Disney's happy and DeSantis is happy. Neither side defeated the other. Although Disney got more out of it than Florida got, big time. Which I'm not going to go through all that now, but they did. I've talked about it a lot in the past, okay? You know, and it, it involves the utilities. Disney used to have to pay for the fire department, the water uh, purification, the electrical grid and everything. Now the state covers all that, and the road maintenance. So all these things that Disney had to maintain, the infrastructure of that city, the state takes care of. There's other things too. But it was a, it was a mutual mediated agreement where both sides are happy. And DeSantis had a press conference. Universal Studios Orlando has a new theme park opening up next month. Or ne I'm sorry, not next month, next year. It's called Epic Universe, and it's supposed to be like the most incredible uh, Universal theme park ever. They got a, a, a Nintendo world there and a, a whole Harry Potter world and all, all kinds of cool stuff. That's why I'm going to become an annual pass holder again at Universal. It looks like the most amazing theme park ever, this Epic Universe that Universal is doing. And Universal are in competition with Disney. So, so DeSantis has a press conference after this mediated agreement between him and Disney. And in the press conference, he mentions Epic Universe, which is going to be a big game changer in Orlando. Um, big game changer if you're into theme parks in Florida vacationing. And he gave advice to Disney on not only building uh, a fifth theme park, because Disney has four theme parks at Disney World. He not only recommended they build a fifth theme park, but gave specific recommendations to make it so it's competitive with what they have at Universal, because Dis Universal has a lot of very thrilling roller coasters, which I don't ride any of them. I don't ride roller coasters. Not very many. And he gave them very detailed advice on not only building a fifth theme park, but what it should be, to, and he said, to compete with Epic Universe at Universal Studios. And he talked about how important Disney is to Florida. This is in this press conference this week with this lawsuit. And I predicted last year when DeSantis is out of office and he realizes he's unelectable forever because he betrayed us, that he'll end up doing things in his final year or so as governor that will help Disney, which he just did, this mediated thing, and that he will end up on the board of directors at Disney because he's not going to be able to get elected for anything after this. And it looks like that's happening. So I'm very happy that Ron DeSantis, this, uh, this toll relief thing, that's, that's money in my pocket, big time, because I, I, I drive the turnpike so much. Please don't tell anybody I told you about that. We don't want everybody to know about the toll relief, okay? It'll just make the traffic heavy on the turnpike. And I don't want to have heavier traffic on the turnpike. So don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> yeah, even though I'm broadcasting it. But, and, and this thing he did um, with the squatters. These are spectacular things. And I imagine he's going to do a lot of other spectacular things that we'll like and that benefit us and put money in our pockets like he just did with this toll relief thing, you know? But you still can't trust him. You still can't trust him. You know, and, and this uh, uh, thing with the squatters, you know, um, when I retire, what I, you know, what I, one of the things I plan on doing is keeping my house instead of selling it, I'll move to a condo or something, you know, when I'm old and move to some retirement home, but keeping my house and renting it out and have income from that and leave it to my daughter so she can have revenue from it when I'm gone. And and my wife and I were saying, well, that, that doesn't sound like a very good plan with all these squatters. And now that we got this squatters law, my retirement plan is on track. And that's many years from now, hopefully. <laughs> but, you know, he's doing good things. But we still cannot trust Ron DeSantis. He owes us all an apology, starting with President Trump in person. All right, if you're on hold, stand by. We'll take our break for the top of the hour. You're listening to The Steve Cain Show, Florida's longest-running radio show on the radio since 1977. I mean, you agree with me? Do you trust DeSantis? Would you trust him again? 
Would you be happy voting for him again? Not me. But I do like these things he's doing. one 465 2631 is our number. It's a toll-free call. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. Call us on hold. Stand by. We'll be back right after this. Weissman Community Center, Automatic Ave in Delray Beach. Come out, get fit, and get healthy. Learn more at greatersouthfloridachamber.com. Brian Craig here. When it comes time to get my blood work done, I don't have time to spend hours in the doctor's office or waiting hours to wear those big labs. It's when you visit any lab test in Old Pearl. In any lab test in Old Pearl Springs for all of my lab work. Their techs are highly skilled and professional, and their prices are guaranteed to be the lowest on lab work you'll find anywhere. Appointments are necessary. Doctor's orders and prescriptions, they're not needed either. I'm in and out in 15 minutes or less. I get the results the next day in my email box, and they also send to my doctor. There's lots of any lab test downs around, but these are the only two advertising on our radio station. So don't use the rest. Only go to any lab test now with Boca and any lab test now with Coral Springs. Any lab test now with Boca is in the Sandalfoot Plaza. That's where the Western Loop is, between Palmetto Park Road and Hillsboro Boulevard on the east side of State Road 7, 441. Lab test now of Coral Springs is on the southeast corner of University and Ramblewood by the Coral Square Mall. Call any lab test now of Boca at 561-237-5029. Any lab test now of Coral Springs is 954-906-5983. And don't forget to mention that you heard that on the radio. Here's your true ABC News update. Of course Jupiter chose a good choice. Absolutely. Give him a call. You can find him online at jupiterjoe.com or call him at 561-743-0999. Yeah, a lot of you guys that watch on YouTube have taken advantage of that no-charge phone consultation. He can help you no matter where you are in the country. I was talking to him yesterday. He was telling me how many people from YouTube have called him. No, I don't own multiple homes. I said when I retire and I move to a retirement community, I would like to keep my house and rent it out so I can leave it to my daughter and have the rental income.
All right, five minutes after the hour, hour number two has begun. It's Wednesday, hump day, the middle of the week. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. This is Rabbi Dr. Yoram. Hey, Rabbi. What's up? Thank God all's well. You know, I really appreciate your conversations. I really like the toll pass discussion because I drive on the turnpike every day, 200 miles back and forth teaching at the uh, university. And uh, I've uh, really seen the recurring uh, fees that come back to my account. It's a win-win. The government doesn't have to just keep taxing me, like you said. For yeah, and then, exactly. And second, but, yeah, exactly. And it's capitalism at its finest. But, you know, DeSantis, I believe, became a hack uh, as a result of his handlers. I think that, you know, because he seems like a good enough guy, and he just got some bad advice. And uh, he could have stuck, he could have been vice president, he could have been the next president. But, you know, that's what happens. And uh, the second thing I wanted to share about is I'm Canadian, unfortunately. And uh, when I was uh, moving to this country, coming to this country, I didn't know any of the laws, but I recently found out that if they do try to lock up President Trump, well, I think that would be a horrible idea, and you think the insurrection was an issue. Mm. This country would never stand for that. But uh, they, he cannot be tried during his presidency. You know, him and Bibi the president of Israel, are both guys that are the most patriotic, most dedicated, and the, the, the liberals don't like them, and what do they do? They try to lock them up so they don't have a voice. Well, this is, this is, this is, this is what they've always done in this country, and I, and I, I use Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon and, Richard's, Nix, and Richard Nixon's vice president were both pushed out of office and forced to resign by Democrats. So what they're doing to Trump is something they've they've done forever. Democrat, you know, the Civil War was uh, started by the Democrats because they lost the election of 1860 to uh, Abraham Lincoln, the, our first Republican president, and we and the Republicans won in 1860, and they they started the Civil War. The Democrat, the Democrats have always been this way. They're terrible people. Yeah, this is their plan. Their plan is to, as Trump said, keep him and they'll do anything that's possible. Mm -hmm. the whole, we're sitting here now. They, he's one of the top 500 richest Americans, billions of dollars, and if he wouldn't have been able to store this war chest and be his great big success, they would have achieved. Absolutely. All right, Rabbi, you're, you're, you're right. I, I appreciate the call. Thanks so much. Okay, so let me get back to uh, the new stuff here. So, you know, President Trump had these great speeches, one in Wisconsin, one in Michigan yesterday. And, of course, the border is, is primary, and I'm, I'll play some clips and we'll talk about it, but Jean-Pierre, yesterday at the White House press conference, listen to this. Does the White House believe that there is a bloodbath taking place or a wave of migrant crime? Look, um, mm -hmm. we've been very clear about, uh, I just laid out to Josh, uh, when it comes to immigrants, how important they are to, to the fabric of this country, how important they are uh, to the strength of this country, to our economy. And that continues to, to be true, right? That's something that this president believes. Okay, notice, you know, the reason I play this, see, this is that 1984 changing the me meaning of words. Um, they're, they're declaring the illegals immigrants, and immigrants are part of the fabric of this country, and what they're doing is they're changing things because, you know, mo most, uh, we're all descendant of immigrants at some point. By the way, e that even is true with Indians, and I mean Native American Indians, okay? We're all descendant of immigrants, even them, but that doesn't mean we are all immigrants. And this country has always had regulation on immigration. There's never been a time when it didn't, even during the days of colonization, he had to get permission from the crown to come over here and set up a colony, okay? Um, you know, President Trump in his speech yesterday in Michigan with the police, he dropped an amazing um, fact. And President Trump said in Venezuela, did you guys see this one? And, you know, Fox News carried the first speech. I don't know if they carried the second one. I didn't want, I, I watched the second one on um, right side broadcasting, the one in Wisconsin. But his Michigan, so I don't know what they did with that, but the Michigan speech was actually carried by Fox. I was surprised. Uh, they carried pretty much the whole thing. 
But anyway, in the Michigan speech yesterday, President Trump said that crime in Venezuela has dropped by 67 percent. You hear me right. President Trump said this. Crime in Venezuela has dropped 67 percent. And the reason is because they're bringing their criminals here. They're not just emptying out their prisons. They're bringing the one. They bust them instead of sending them. They don't they never go to prison. They just send them here. And that's frightening. That's frightening. And that's that's why we have so many of these things that we're dealing with uh, going on. And that when both speeches were great and they were different, the first one was a little short because it was a different type of thing. He was getting the endorsement from the police. But uh, in Wisconsin, he, he, let me play this. This is President Trump at the end of the Wisconsin. I have a lot of sound bites from his speeches yesterday. And this one I want to share with you because it's... Uh, it's, it's how we ended the speech in Wisconsin. And we will take back our country on November 5th, 2024, the most important day in the history of our country. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, it's our leadership. You notice what he says by that, then he does... He's not using our, like the, the royal we, like talking about himself. He's talking about all of us that are voting and supporting him, which is pretty amazing. Never heard a president uh, say this. Oh, before I forget, I was talking with Mike after the show yesterday. Uh, if you remember on Friday's show, I, I'm going to interrupt the president for this because I will forget. I want to get this out. On Friday's show... I was talking about how President Trump paid off the mortgage for uh, the, the uh, New York City police officer's widow, right? He gave the money to Tunnels to Towers and they pay, to pay off her mortgage. And I got a call at the end of the show from a very upset lady. She was so upset that the wid widow of Officer Diller, who was murdered by a Democrat, uh, had her mortgage paid off by Trump. She was so ticked off about it. She says, I know those guys. I'm from Mesopiqua and I'm going to do my research. And, and she said, it's Friday. I'll, I'll hold on. And I came in Monday and I was wondering if she was going to stay on hold all weekend, you know, plug her phone in and do the charger and everything else. And she wasn't there. And I forgot to mention it. And I forgot to mention it yesterday. Then Mike and I were talking after the show yesterday. She's told me at the end of Friday's show, you guys heard this, she was going to call her Tunnel to Tower contacts and uh, find out that he did not pay off her mortgage and come back on Monday and correct me. Well, here we are Wednesday, and she hasn't called in. I told her, I said, you look it up. So I can assume by that that her what investigation led her, of this Trump-hating woman led her to find out that President Trump did, in fact, pay off the mortgage of Officer Diller's widow. Or she would have been on the line Monday morning making a big to-do about it. And so, you know, it's Wednesday. Haven't heard from her. All right, so let me get back to this. This is President Trump ending the speech in Wisconsin. And we will take back our country on November 5th, 2024, the most important day in the history of our country. <laughs> The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, it's our leadership. The forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. You will be forgotten no longer. You weren't forgotten for four beautiful years. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together we will make America powerful again. Make America wealthy again. Make America strong again. Make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Wisconsin. Go out and vote. Yeah, I mean, how can you disagree with any of that? I mean, you're, you're, you know, if you're not supporting Trump, you're, you're running against making America great again, right? How, how can you be opposed to that?
You know what they say? Make it better for who? Well, the American people. Yeah, but what does that mean? Make you know, you know, they get they get very upset at the idea of American greatness. All right, we'll take our first break of this hour, and then we'll get. There's a lot more to discuss from these great speeches yesterday, and there's a lot of other things to touch on as well. I hope we can get through a lot of it. Our number is toll free one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. Triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. I'm Brian Craig. We'll be right back. Don't sit on the It is a beautiful day today. It's going to be a high of 91 degrees today here in South Florida. We'll be back right after this. In the Palm Beaches on 95.9 FM, the Treasure Coast on 106.9 FM, here is in Boca on 95.3 FM, Fort Lauderdale on 96.9 FM, and anywhere in the world at True... All right, we are 24 days away from our cruise to Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao to the ABC Islands on the Celebrity Beyond. And the, the cruise was sold out like months ago, okay? Um, but so the, the message that I have are for those of you that are already booked, you know, online check-ins available. And make sure that you go and do that. And I'm going to tell you why, okay? Um, Steve doesn't even know this yet because I... Tried to get a hold of him and his wife yesterday, and they they weren't taking my calls. I, I'm sure they were very busy. <laughs> um, uh, Steve and his wife, Lori, had um, some mistakes made on their booking. They uh, had the birth dates wrong for both of them, and uh, there was a, a, a misspelling with the name and everything. They would have been denied boarding. Steve Steve Kane, on, on our Steve Kane cruise, would have been denied boarding because... 
they had the birth dates wrong and things on the booking because, you know, it's TSA and all that stuff. So those of you that are already booked, okay, do your online booking so that everything is fine. And when you do the online booking, you show up to the port, you just walk right on board, man. Okay? So uh, make sure you do that. I've already done it. My daughter's done it. She's bringing a friend. They're already done their online booking. And um, if uh, Ian, our travel agent, caught it yesterday because um, we were making some additions to Steve's reservation, and they would have gotten to the port and found out that they were denied board. So those of you that are booked, go online and do your online booking. Complete that process to make sure everything's okay, to make it seamless when you show up to the port on Saturday the 27th. Also, uh, make sure you uh, set up the excursions. You know, we have um, uh, chartered a private catamaran, and this uh, we, we have two, actually, but the one in Curacao is the Sunset Sailing. We have our own private catamaran. We're going to sail around the island and watch the sunset together. So make sure you sign up for those shore excursions, in particular that one. You can call Ian at Cruise and Travel Depot. You guys know the number because you're already booked, okay? And uh, take care of all that stuff. It's very important. All right, so um, Mayor Pete, you know, Mayor Pete said the other day that he may never, he's not sure if he'll run for office again. You know what that means? He's setting up some, some fake corporate job that he doesn't have to show up to or some media pundit job at CNN or MSNBC or something. That beats working. And, you know, he, he's, he's, he's detestable. He's an unlikable, weird guy. And um, he's just not going to be anything. Who's going who's gonna to vote for and elect Pete Buttigieg for anything? And he's such a snob, right? I mean, he really... Um, really looks down at regular people, as you'll hear in this clip I'm going to play. But, you know, the Secretary of Transportation typically is a job that people get. It's a do-nothing job that someone's given because they help whoever the president is get elected in some way. Uh, but his time as Transportation Secretary, there's been all kinds of problems. The ship collision we were talking about earlier, was it an attack? We don't know, you know. The supply chain issue, you know, all these things. And he's dropped the ball every time. So yesterday he goes on Fox and uh, he's pushing electric cars. Fell 8.5% the first quarter of this year. Ford this week is laying off two-thirds of its workforce at the F-150 electric lightning plant. It's also scaling back a battery production facility because of sagging sales. Okay, now, now the EVs are on their way out. They're going the way of the Etzel. And, you know, the thing with EVs, the electric vehicles, the reason that electric vehicles are, have sagging sales, dealers are refusing to accept them from the factory, the re is, is it's word of mouth from owners of electric vehicles is so bad. Um, and, you know, when someone buys an electric vehicle, they're paying boatloads of cash for these cars, and they're telling people they suck. So the word of mouth from own they're not going out of, the, the sales aren't falling because of right-wing people that like our gasoline vehicles. It's owners of electric vehicles who are saying these are bad, don't get them. I saw a guy uh, yesterday online, he just bought the new Cybertruck. That's the Tesla truck, Elon Musk truck. And he drove it from the dealer and he was in it. He just left the dealer. He was like four miles from the dealer and everything lit up in red on the screens on it. It, it, had a, it had a systems computer crash. And he made a video. He's like, Elon, what are you doing to me? You know, yeah. So, the, what about, so that's why the sales are, you know, look at these guys after the hurricane here in Florida that were making videos showing that their Teslas were spontaneously combusting into flames after the floodwaters had corroded the batteries. You see all these things. Um, I see videos online of, of Tesla owners up north. They can't get them started because it's too cold for the battle. Oh, it's terrible. So they're, they're, going, they're going away and uh, becoming very unpopular. Anyway, so back to Mayor Pete on Fox yesterday talking about uh, electric vehicle sales declines. Tesla sales fell 8.5% the first quarter of this year. Ford this week is laying off two-thirds of its workforce at the F-150 electric lightning plant. It's also scaling back a battery production facility because of sagging sales. EV sales are nowhere near what this president wanted or expected. 
Yet the administration continues to shove them down consumers' throats. Why? Well, let's be clear. Consumers have wanted and purchased more EVs every single year than the year before. And, uh, you know, Tesla is facing more competition as GM and Ford and Stellantis and other competitive players uh, start to make sure they get a piece of the EV market. Let's be clear that uh, the automotive sector is moving toward EVs, and we can't pretend otherwise. Sometimes when these debates happen, I feel like... See, see, and, and Mayor Pete's circle... I wonder if he even has a license and drives a car. I, I don't know. In Mayor Pete's circle of merry gay guys and, and that are all Democrats, they all drive Teslas. It's virtue signaling. I have a Tesla. You know, I have a Rivian or whatever that, that electric truck is. You know, remember I told you the story? I saw this guy. He's got the Rivian truck, which is the electric truck. I forget who makes them. And he was driving to the dealer for service, and he couldn't find a working charger. He made a YouTube video about this. And uh, he says, I'm almost out of juice. I can't find any working chargers. He says, I'm going to drive through this neighborhood and find a Tesla house. He saw a Tesla in a driveway. He pulled up and knocked on a stranger's door and said, uh, can I borrow your charger here at your house? I mean, can you imagine knocking on someone's door with a gasoline can? So in, in Mayor Peach circle, where everyone's married, gay, and has kids that they've adopted, uh, and a Tesla, okay, you know, everybody's driving them. Well, that's not the case. Early 2000s, and I'm talking to some people who uh, think that we can just have landline phones forever. Te wow. So I, I, let me rewind a little bit because I, I, I paused it right before he got to the part about the phones. Well, let's be clear. Consumers have wanted and purchased more EVs every single year than the year before. And, uh, you know, Tesla is facing more competition as GM and Ford and Stellantis and other competitive players uh, start to make sure they get a piece of the EV market. Let's be clear that uh, the automotive sector is moving toward EVs, and we can't pretend otherwise. Sometimes when these debates happen, I feel like it's the early 2000s, and I'm talking to some people who uh, think that we can just have landline phones forever. Okay, you see how you see how snobby is people that want to have landline phones? I want a landline phone. Don't Wouldn't you like to have a landline phone? How many people are dead because landlines don't exist? You know what I mean by that? Call 911 on your cell phone. Who the hell do you get? Right. It's hard to, you know, on a, on a cell phone, depending on where you are, it's very difficult to get help. Where are you? I don't know. Well, and you're ringing somewhere where you're not at. You get an accident on the road, you call a cell phone, you get the wrong 911 operator. There, I don't know how many people are dead because we don't have landlines. Like, I remember I, my first car accident, I was 17 years old. Someone ran a stop sign and hit me. And uh, that was like 88. You know, only people that had cell phones, car phones, and, and stuff then were rich people, really rich people, the brick phones. So what did, you remember what you used to do? You used to go, you'd knock on someone's house and borrow their phone. Or you'd go to a gas station and use the pay phone. Then 911 knew where you were. Don't you wish you had a landline? I don't even have jacks at my house anymore. I covered them up. And my wife was saying to me recently, I wonder if we can get a landline. I don't know, can you? You know, I, I don't know. And I, and I know there, you know, anytime we have phone problems here, sometimes we have phone problems. It's because the phones are all internet based now and they're not as reliable as landlines. You know, and, and I, you know, landlines, I remember back in the days when we would have hurricanes and we'd have power outages during hurricanes in the landline era, phones still worked. The whole state would, we'd have no power. I remember after Hurricane Andrew, we didn't have power. We, after Wilma, we didn't have power for two weeks, but the phone still worked. Phone still worked because they're on a different power grid. I don't know how it, the landlines. Now with no landlines, towers get knocked down. You don't have phone in, in, in emergencies like you used to. But Mayor Pete, he's never had to deal with anything. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Calls on hold, standby. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. Back after this. Making. Yeah, it was on the air during Hurricane a Andrew.
I wish we had land. Don't you guys want your landline back? I want my landline back. Oh, yeah. the same cruise. Yep. <laughs> oh, they should have gone with us. They'd have more fun. They wanted to, but uh, they can't call for it. Usually they come oh. out like the summer and like, or my mom's like birthday in the winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they, one of these days, I think probably next year, they're probably going to try. Yeah. Try yeah. I want it. If I could get like, like, uh, what's his face? Uh, Jeremy to like learn how to just put the replays in. Oh, yeah, that would help. <laughs> that would help. Maybe you can access the computer from the ship. Honestly, that's not really a good day. It could work. Yeah. The internet is pretty fast. It's the it's the Starlink. Yeah. Yeah. If you're on hold, hang in there. I'm going to go to the phones after the break. I'm going to come back with this clip of President Trump, though. Installation. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> We'll be back shortly, guys. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And everyone who's already subbed, please like the video. This is most definitely where MAGA comes to talk.
All right, here we go. <clears throat> Years on the air. On day one, I will seal the border and we'll begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. And if other countries say they won't take them back, we're not going to take them back. I will say that, uh, yeah, here they come. You just gonna hold on, hold on to your britches because here they come. They're coming back. All right, there you go. That was President Trump yesterday in Michigan. Can't wait for that deportation to start. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. Yeah, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, hi, Brian. This is Joan in Tampa Bay. Hey, Joan. I heard the, I heard the lady voice, and I, I was like, oh, maybe this is the lady who said that uh, she was going to prove that Trump did not pay the mortgage off of the widow of the police officer in New York City, but I guess not. No, I'm not always Trumpo. <laughs> yes, yes. What's on your mind? Um, I'm for our beloved president. That's it. Absolutely. He won the last election. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the greatest president ever. <clears throat> Think the power comes from that powers the electric cars. It yeah. Nuclear power plants. Coal fire power plants, petroleum fire power plants. So what are they doing? Yeah, and and our power grid's not set up. You know, I used to have an electric grill, you know, in my backyard, which because I don't I don't like dealing with propane gas because I burned my eyelashes off once with one, and I don't like and charcoal is such a mess. And I got uh, I got a an, an electric grill. And I got rid of the electric grill because every time I tried to cook, half the power went off in the house. Couldn't handle it. It couldn't handle it because it took so much power to heat a grill up to cook the, the you know, the hot dogs and stuff. You know, you, you, the, the electrical grids of our neighborhoods are not set up for everybody to have an EV, an electric vehicle. Right, but they don't realize that the power grid that's supplying them is all this energy that they don't like. It's yeah. coming from windmills. Yeah, exactly. And, and the windmills, by the way, kill all those birds and everything else. They, you know. And if there's no wind, they don't generate electricity. Where's the Audubon Society for all the killed, killed birds? I mean, you know, they're crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, Joan in Tampa, appreciate the call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Louise, the mask lady in Boca. Hey, Louise. Yes, first of all, somebody did say in my class that uh, Trump did not pay off the mortgage uh, of the... Uh, oh, no, no, no. I didn't say that someone didn't say it. He did pay off the mortgage of Officer no, Dillard. No, no, no. I was saying in my <clears throat> class, one fellow said, oh, no, he didn't pay the mortgage. Oh, really? How do they know? I don't know. I heard from you that the, he... He did. He did. It was reported. It was reported. But I also want to mention the landline, which I'm calling on now. And I love my landline, and they're going to do away with them. And they're probably going to do away with them because everybody canceled their landline. You, you still have a working landline. Yeah, I'm talking to you on it right now. And I'm wow. Wow. And the, yeah. They, they told me they're going to do away with them, probably because they can't make any money from them now. Do they charge? Do, do they charge you extra money for it? Because there's so few of them now. Sure, I pay about sixty dollars a month. Mm, that's less than my cell phone bill. Well, I have both. Yeah. I love my landline. I, I don't like. Them. Well, you should have a land. You know, a, a, a anyone who lives alone, in particular, a woman or someone who's elderly, should have a landline. Because it always works and, and, and sends you right to the right 911. You have you ever called 911 on a cell phone? You might get the right 911 operator, but you, you, you might not. I see. But what I want to know is why did everybody cancel them? Because they didn't want to pay the extra phone bill. 
Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I got rid of mine, and Why? I guess I didn't need it. Hadn't rang in years. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I, you know, my, my, mother, my mother got rid of her landline a couple years ago, and I said, Mom, you, I said, Mom you've had that number since, my mom had the same number since 1984, the, and she got rid of it. I haven't phoned in 50 years. Yeah, I mean, the same phone number. I said, everybody that knows you knows your phone number. And uh, after, I don't know how many years that was, but she had it since 1984, and she got rid of it. I couldn't believe it. I'm upset because they tell me that any day now they're getting rid of them. And I'm so upset because I love my landline. I do, too. I do, too. I, I want it back. But you got rid of it, I did, it was a it was a mistake. Yeah, jacks and it, I don't even have jacks anymore. I no, I I uh, I took the jacks out and I put you know I sealed them up. I patched the holes and painted the rooms. Yeah, I don't have jacks anymore. I'm very upset because they say they're going to do away with them any day now. Oh my goodness! All right, well you know, but they but they but they but they won't do away with the mask. I bet. I still wear, you know, I may go to my first event uh, this Mother's Day. I'm afraid to go anywhere. I go to my senior center because I stay in the back of the room when nobody's breathing. Oh, my goodness. Do you, do you know my wife and I, neither of us have had COVID? Well, I haven't had it either, but I know a lot of people, older people, some of them are hospitalized. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. It happens. That have died. Sure. So I'm afraid. I'm yeah. a very slight person and mm. I'm eighty four. You know, I you know who I think you are? I don't I don't think your name's Louise. I think your name's Howard. I think you're Howard Stern. Because Howard Stern sounds like you. An old lady. All right, in Boca. Take care. He's the same way. Oh my goodness. You know, I remember when I was a kid here, when I first moved to Florida. This is in the listening range of our station, and I lived in Okeechobee. There were so few people that lived there, we all had the same first three digits of our phone numbers. It was 763. So when you gave your phone number to someone, you just told them the last four digits. 1492. 8252 was mine. And they knew because they had the same thing. And now all those days are gone. Everybody's got cell phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Conservative Doug. Hey, Doug. I, I had landline, two landlines in my house, and uh, AT&T called me up and said, oh, I got a, a better internet for you. I said, okay, great. So then I, I, I switched over. Next thing I know, I got a power out that had no phone. So, exactly. So I said, what the hell's going on? Uh, where's my landline? Uh, oh, we, we, we changed them. I said, well, well, I don't tell you to change my landline. I changed, and changed the, the internet. I want them back. Oh, no, you can't have them back. Anyway, so I said, oh, really? Okay, so I canceled everything from 18 and went to someplace else. Yeah. Anyway. Do, do, so do, do, do you have a landline? No, I wish I did. Me too. Like, like, like you said, in a hurricane, the landlines work, no matter what. And, and the, 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 uh, I, I have so many times I've been on the regular phone, so, that internet, and I get uh, Well, you're, remember, a after the hurricanes, you got to go out to your, if there's no power, you got to go sit in your car. And charge it up in your car and burn valuable gas because gas can be hard to get after a hurricane. But the landlines always worked. So I always had a problem with static or dropping the call or anything. But this is what they did. Now I don't know why they didn't like landlines, but they. Uh, I mean, if you know the cell phones are connected to all the towers, like the radio towers, right? So towers get knocked down during hurricane. So you, we have a hurricane. Your cell phone has no signal. Or the the remaining towers are overloaded with activity. You can't make calls, but if you have a landline, you can. Ten, ten times better. I, I would I would say everybody should have landlines, but I don't want them, and we're not going to get them. I guess now that lady just said they're going to get rid of them, whether you want them or not. So the other thing is, I, I just so happened yesterday talking to this guy who, who wants to trade in his car, which has a, a, a twenty three Genesis. For, for a Tesla. He says, no, oh, they're going to give me so much money for my car to trade. I said, you know why? Because they can't sell the car, so they yes. no money to, to trade the car to make it seem like a better deal. I said, do, do, do you know that 
You have to put a charging station in your house to cost maybe two, three thousand dollars. Oh, I didn't know that. I could just plug it. No, you can't just plug it in. If you do that, it'll take you three days to charge the damn car. Yeah. So, it was ridiculous. You said, I didn't know that. So we just think and, and, and think about what is electric. You know, I told, I was talking to Steve about this the other day. The old radio station, the 1470, was uh, on Dixie Highway between Palmetto and Hillsboro. And there's a Wawa over on Hillsboro by 95. And I used to go there and get go coffee and gas in the mornings. And they have Tesla charging stations at the Wawa on Hillsboro in 95. And I'd see people sleeping in their, car in their Teslas while they were waiting, while they were charging their cars. And some of them are women. And if you, you guys know Hillsboro Boulevard, you, when you get... Uh, to uh, just east of I-95, it is one of the most dangerous areas of South Florida. It's like, it's, it's, it's all, you know, it's all crackheads and crack dealers and, and very bad people. And there's men and women, women in particular, they got their door open and they're sleeping in their Tesla waiting for it to uh, charge in a high crime. Does that sound safe? And they got to do that before they go to work? I, I pull up and it takes me 60 seconds. Top off my tank and drive off. Well, and and gas sta and gas stations. You know how many women get robbed at gas stations? They they get their purses stolen while they're pumping up gas. Very gas stations are very dangerous because you're vulnerable. You got your money out and you're vulnerable. And pe and I, sitting in your run in, in your car charging your Tesla before work on Hillsboro Boulevard is dangerous. No doubt about it. You know, then I heard, I don't know if it's, if this is true or not, but I heard uh, uh, Tesla decided they're going to phase out uh, electric motor hydrogen. Uh, 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 hydrogen? Isn't that what they make the, the, the bombs out? What, what is that about? What was in the Hindenburg? Wasn't that, was, wasn't that what, the, what was in the Hindenburg? <laughs> was, it, was, it, was, it, did, was it hydrogen in the Hindenburg? Hydrogen. Oh, oh, the humanity. Oh, my goodness. All right, we'll be right back. The cold, hard truth. Delivered morning six to nine right here on the Steve King Show. Brian Craig here. I've been telling you about how my chiropractor, Dr. Philip Hamilton, has rid me of pain from a knee injury and arthritis pain with his laser weight pain treatment. But don't just take my word for it. This is one of our callers who called me live on the radio to tell me how chiropractic physician, Dr. Philip Hamilton, helped him. I just wanted to say, oh, the humanity. I don't know how many people got that joke. Not that you should be making jokes about the Hindenburg, but you know.
exhausted after work <clears throat> with no energy left in the day to give your family? Are you having a midday crash on a daily basis? Women, are menopause symptoms like hot flashes, anxiety, and depression making your daily life feel far more difficult than it should? Men, do you feel like you're aging far beyond what you should? Is your sexual life and relationships suffering because of disappointments in the bedroom? To take action and let our medical team at Lighthouse Medical Center help you stop the symptoms that are holding you back. We use all natural hormone optimization therapies with precision technology to help solve your problematic symptoms. Our family-owned practice has had the honor of serving our South Florida community for over 71 years. Call us right now and let our medical team get you optimized and feeling the way that you should. Life is too short to be running at less than 100%. You and your family deserve the best version of you. Call us at 754-222-6642 or visit us at lighthousemedicalcenter.com to schedule your consultation. <clears throat> Congress to send a bill to my desk ensuring that anyone who murders a police officer will receive immediately the death penalty. Yeah. I guess they like the police. I like the police. I like the police, so we're going to do that. You know, this, uh, welcome back everyone, I'm Brian, it's the Steve Kane Show. That was Trump yesterday in Wisconsin. You know, the death penalty for the police killers. Um, the, the most, the worst kind, the most dangerous kind of killer are the people that kill cops, right? If they're not afraid of a police officer, if they're not afraid of a police officer, they're not going to be afraid of anyone, okay? If, if they will kill a police officer without thinking you're you're done you're done and that's a good thing you know i used to have this friend i haven't talked to him in many years lost touch with him but he was from uh bulgaria he lived in he lived in bulgaria when it, during during the soviet union time so it was run by the soviet union and he told me we didn't have any crime <laughs> he said cuz he lived in pompano and it, you know a lot of crime in certain parts of pompano and he was telling me, he's like, I can't go outside during the day in my neighborhood. He said, in Bulgaria, he says, you could go out any time of the day, middle of the night, 1 a.m., 4 a.m., 1 in the afternoon, <clears throat> and nothing would ever happen to you. There was no crime. And I said, why? And he said, because if somebody committed a crime, you wouldn't see him again, <laughs> right? He said the same thing. He said, you don't have to worry about your kids, no one's, no one's going to molest your kids in Bulgaria. This is during the Soviet Union. I don't know what's going on there now in Bulgaria because the same thing would happen, right? And, you know, what's, what's happened in this, in this, you see this all the time with, uh, with Democrats. They are pro-crime now. There's, you know, and this thing where he says death penalty for the cops, uh, uh, killers, not the cops, the cop killers, the Democrats want the death penalty for the cops. Um, but the death penalty for cop killers is a very good idea. I'm not even for the death penalty. I'm pro-life. But uh, if someone will kill a cop, a civilian, you're, they have no fear of you because they know when they kill a cop, they're going to have the whole police force after them. And they're not afraid of that? No. It's, uh, you know, this, this pro-criminal uh, Democrat party needs to wake up. You know, the thing about Trump... Almost every problem we're facing in this country, not just the border, but this transgender thing, the crime that's happening, it's going to evaporate in Trump's second term because we're going to have real moral leadership that's getting things done that just doesn't give you a bunch of promises and rhetoric and doesn't move on it like these other Republicans. And also, the, the, the entire country is going to follow his lead. President Trump has a new ad out. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, titled Stop Biden's Border Bu uh, Blood Bath. Stop Biden's Border Blood Bath. It's a new Trump ad. A murder on Grand Rapids Southwest side yesterday. Mm. Armed and dangerous. This is the parking lot where police responded yesterday to gunfire reports. And it is where they found 22-year-old Leah Gomez was pronounced dead right here at the scene. A mom to a nearly two-year-old daughter with special needs. Sledgehammer smashing through the jewelry cases. It should be surprised but it's not. Great Lakes Crossing and Oakland Mall in Troy were hit by this crew. Linked back to his cell from Chile in South America. 
America. The Chilean gangs have been hitting us very hard. We have a hundred plus teams in operation right now in America. Police say Brandon Ortiz Vite used a handgun he bought illegally to shoot Ruby Garcia multiple times on Friday. Before leaving her body on the freeway and driving off in a car. Just an awful story. And he confessed that he committed the crime. Yeah, that's it. Stop Biden's border bloodbath. New Trump. You know, this Chilean gang they were talking about there, that's out in in Southern California, in Los Angeles. They came here from Chile illegally just to do crime. It's an entire gang. And when President Trump said, it's crazy. And they're hitting high-end people out there. They're targeting high-end homes. And, you know, when President Trump said yesterday that crime is down, let me play the clip. I think I got the clip here. This is, this is, yeah, this is it. I got the clip here. This is President Trump in Michigan. Yeah, he did Michigan and then Wisconsin. And he was in Michigan for a speech and he was getting, he got the endorsement of the police there. This just blew my mind when I heard this. Under Biden, the bad ones are coming in at a level that nobody ever thought was even possible. Nobody thought this was possible. In Venezuela, the crime is down 67% from what it was a year and a half ago, because they're taking all of their gangs and all of their criminals and they're depositing them into the United States of America. Venezuela, think of it, their crime. Wouldn't we love to have a statistic where crime is down 67%? Ours is only going in one direction, and it's under Biden. The bad ones are coming in. I mean, 67%, It's crime is down in Venezuela. And, and see, that tells you, you know, I remember like during the Mario boat lift, here in Florida, okay? And Castro, remember that this was opening, he was emptying out the prisons and the mental institutions, they said, and sent the people here. I'm not sure how true that is totally because a lot of good friends of mine are Cubans who came here on that boat lift over the years and none of them are from mental institutions or prisons, but that was the rhetoric. But what they're doing in Venezuela, it's not just emptying out their prisons, it, it's almost like if you're, if you're a criminal, you've got amnesty in Venezuela, you show up and say, hey, I'm, I'm here, I'm a criminal, and they just bring you to America. For crime to be, de- you know, and the situation in Venezuela is pretty bad, right? The, the country has been on the verge of collapse for years, and when crime is down 67% in a place that's so impoverished, they're transporting not just their prison population, but their active that's in prison and jails. They're sending their active career population here. That's why it is. And, you know, the number one duty that government has, the president has, is to protect the, the people of the United States. And that's what Trump promises to bring back, which is something that you, we used to take for granted. And we're being told that we're ethnocentric bigots and racists because we don't want to be crime victims or we don't want our women raped and killed by these illegals. Now, I want to ask you this. Are you in pain? There's no need to be in pain. Go see Dr. Appleton. Talk to him about his laser away pain treatment. His, ways, his laser away pain treatment works, guys. I know it works because he's rid me of pain five times. Arthritis, shoulder pains, injuries, uh, knee injuries, knee pain. He's, he's rid me of pain five times. And none of those five times has the pain returned because the laser away pain treatment with Dr. Appleton repairs the damage that's causing the pain. It works on so many different types of pain. Uh, and you hear me go through the list uh, quite often. If you're in pain, you don't have to be. Being in pain is not a part of growing older. With Dr. Appleton, appointments are not necessary. Walk-ins are welcome even on Saturdays. Give him a call, 954-973-0710. 954-973-0710. That's 954-973-0710. If you missed the number, just get it off his website, appletoncairo.com. Give Dr. Appleton a call and say bye-bye to your pain, just like I did. All right, we'll take our break for the top of the hour. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. We'll be back with your calls and Steve Kane after this. WS.
morning, Craig. Let me ask you this. Are you planning on retiring in the next six months, 12 months, two years, at any point in your life? Or are you already retired? Listen, economically, it's a mess with the stock market ups and downs and inflation out of control. In fact, it's the highest inflation rate in 40 years. You need a plan of action for your retirement plans. You need the advice of a retirement expert who can help you protect your money, guarantee your income, and stop losing money. Joe Thomas is president of Retirement Network Advisors, South Florida's premier retirement expert, and has been for over 20 years. We see it all in the true professional that you can trust. They're family-owned and operated. His daughter, Jenny, works with him. You know Joe and Jenny from right here on True Oldies. He's the host of the Jupiter Joe Money Show. They've been doing that for over a decade. You need Jupiter Joe's best for retirement know it all. Look your friend Brian Craig and receive a free copy of your book. We don't want a dictator in office. Who's the dictator? <coughs> You mean Biden, who uh, arrests parents from school board meetings and stuff? Yeah. We'll be back in 10 seconds. <clears throat> it's the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. And what the hell was Biden thinking when he declared Easter Sunday to be Trans Visibility Day? Such total disrespect to Christians, and November 5th is going to be called something else. You know what it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day, when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. That's right. All right. Welcome. Hour number three has begun. I'm Brian. Steve joining us. Hey, Steve. Oh, man. So Christian Visibility Day. You know, that, that, that Transgender Visibility Day was uh, such a big mistake. It's hard to believe, I mean, that, 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 that he's that stupid. Well, it happened, you know, it happened. But I'll tell, but I'll tell you this, um, you know, the, did you catch Trump's speeches yesterday? I quoted almost everything I was watching all day. Oh, they were great speeches, both of them. I mean, I, I was, Fox carried the one in, in Michigan, which is very unusual for them, which I'm glad they did. And then that was a shorter speech, and then the one in Wisconsin after, they were very, very good. It's, I, I don't know how he has the inner... I was tired after just watching them. It's an amazing thing to watch. It's an amazing thing to watch, but uh, it's, I, I can't, I, I've got a complaint that nobody else has got, so I... Oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> what? You're not entitled to have a complaint? Well, I don't know why you'd be complaining. I, I tell you what's bothering me is uh, the, the, the Kennedy... Uh, why? He's taken, he's taken Democrat votes away. Eh, maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know. He's got more of a response than I thought he was going to get, I'll tell you. That's good. I don't understand why, because you, you, you can't understand a word he says. I mean, uh, well, 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 the only one, I mean, um, I feel like the, the, old, the old joke about the elephant in the living room that nobody's mentioning. Nobody talks about it, and I, I just can't get past his voice. It's so... Horrible. I know it's 
not really politically correct to say that. It's like criticizing the handicap, but... He, sound, he sounds like Catherine Hepburn. He says... So I don't, I don't understand. He's, he's taking Democrat votes, so I don't understand why you're complaining. I'm not convinced it's going to stay that way. So he's doing... So he's what? Trying. What What Republican? No, it is going to stay that way. Plus, he's got this um, tech executive as his running mate, this lady. What, what, what makes you think he, what, what makes you uh, think that he's hurting Trump? Where do you get that from? He's hurting Biden. Listening to the numbers as they come in, I mean. What numbers? He, uh, he's getting Democrat voters. He's getting Democrat voters. The original story, but now he's, but he's too close. Who's that? Where? Whoever is reporting that is lying. They want him out. You know, the Democrats are in a panic, you know, and uh, he, there's no MAGA people that are going to be voting for Bobby Kennedy. He's a liberal. He's an extreme liberal. So, no, I know that there's a narrative going on, and it's a false narrative in the media that uh, he's going to hurt Trump. That's a lie. He is, he is going to hurt. Somebody else is saying that, too. Uh, that the you should be very happy about Bobby Kennedy. I, I hope he's on the ballot in as many, in all 50 states. Because a lot, a lot of these old Democrats will vote for a Kennedy. They're not going to vote for Trump. No, he's not hurting Trump. He's helping Trump. And his, his, and his wife is, is, is uh, one of the Beverly Hills Hollywood insiders, Cheryl Hines. She's, she plays the wife of Larry David on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, the woman with the big teeth. That's, that's Bobby Kennedy's wife. Watching the basketball tournament. And they had Larry David was at the uh, game. Yeah, he's a jerk. He did an inter. Yeah, he's a jerk. He hates Trump. Let me know. He, I mean, beyond hates him. I mean, he was he was ranting and raving, and he was having a, a fit. Yeah. To, uh, the, he's evidently rooting for the other team. No. Yeah. He's yeah the other team. He's rooting for the team that are trying to destroy America. You know, he, <clears throat> the show's funny. The show's funny. But he did an interview, um, you know, he, he, um, he's been doing a lot of interviews, Larry David, because it's like the, I guess it's the final season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. And I, I, I listened to two interviews with him. One was with Conan O'Brien. And he told the story, he used to be in the Army. He was in the, like, the National Guard or Reserve. You know, that's, that's what those guys did, so they didn't have to go to Vietnam. And he lied uh, he got a fake doctor's note about his mental health. He was telling this to Conan O'Brien to get discharged. Now, I don't know. I don't know what the statute of limitations is on that. I, I don't know if there even is one. But he he uh, paid a doctor to give him a letter saying that he had some type of psych psychological issue. And no, he's retiring from it. So well, let me finish. And then he went to the he went back to the army base, gave it to his uh, commanding officer. And they discharged him on this fraudulently obtained medical diagnosis that he paid for. I, and I'm listening to him telling this to Conan O'Brien. And I'm thinking, does he know he's doing this on national broadcast that he's confessing to this severe crime? And I was thinking about all the trouble that they went after George Bush for, for his Texas National Guard service. It's between Larry David and George Bush's. Yeah, one's a Republican. and But they're on the same team now. They're both on Team Biden. And then Larry David did an interview with um, Chris Wallace uh, over the weekend, and he, just, he said terrible things about, um, about Trump. Oh, so. oh yeah, he's, he's a vile, vile, nasty man. And Chris Wallace asked him how much money he's worth, and he, he got more angry at that question than anything I've ever seen. I mean, he was like in a, a just, he was, he got so... Well, Larry David, when, when Chris Wallace asked Larry David how much money he's worth, he had a fit that was so bad he even apologized to Chris Wallace for it. And, yeah, and, but, you know, if I were... This is going his way. I think that was part of it. Well, this wasn't the game. This was an interview in the studio. It wasn't the game. And, and, I, and I'm listening to him trash Trump. Get, he's so rich, he's embarrassed by it, right? Some people think he's, you know... He, because he created Seinfeld with Jerry. But the, the, the question to ask Larry David while he's trashing Trump is, um, of, does he take the Trump tax cuts? 
which you know he does. You know, he's, t you know, he's taken all the, he, as much as he, he's worth over half a billion dollars, Larry David. He, some estimates put it at about a billion dollars. Jerry Seinfeld's net worth is a little higher because he didn't just get the creative money, he got the acting money too. So he's worth a little bit more than Larry David, but they're both like worth about a billion. And you know that Larry David, who despise, says he talks about Trump in ways that only, you know, Kathy Griffin talks about. about I mean, it was really vile. It was vile. And you know he takes every single tax cut. And also, I'd like to know, there's another, so I'd ask him about that. And then my follow-up question would be, how many undocumented non-union players work on Curb Your Enthusiasm? Because, you know, you're supporting Joe Biden in the open borders with these immigrants. These illegals, how many of these non-union illegals are working on Curb Your Enthusiasm? And you know the answer is zero because it's a union shop. You know, you know these, uh, Larry David, you know, if Chris Wallace really wanted to have an interesting newsmaker interview, he would ask questions like that. Each other, they're on the same team. Eh, it was... It was a pretty sick interview. And, I, and if anybody knows, when, what is this? It, when Larry David is bragging that he paid a doctor to give him a fake medical diagnosis, I think it was a psychological issue, and he got a discharge from the service through fraud, which is what he was bragging to Conan O'Brien about, is, is, the, is there a statute of limitations on that um, or not? Um, Nobody's gonna, no, nobody on his side is going to go after him. Well, our side's coming back in a couple months, Steve. If you haven't noticed, November 5th is Christian Visibility Day, and in January, Trump's back. So I'd, I'd like people to start asking about this because, you know, you know I want, he, he, if he commit, that's a crime. That's a, that's a major federal felony, what he was uh, bragging about doing. And I only bring it up because he's so nasty about all of us. But I did do something, you know, you talk about um, the game. I, uh, I, I tried to watch that new football league. You know, the USFL merged with the XFL. And the, the Rock, I guess, owns XFL. They merged with USFL. And I turned the game on because I, I was listening to them promote it. They're like, oh, it's great. The players are mic'd up. They've got cameras on their helmets. The refs have cameras. It was un. It was like watching a high school game. It was really bad. It was worse than. I mean, it was. I. It was unwatchable. Now maybe that's just me, because I'm not a big sports guy. But that new football league, it was. It, maybe it was just that game. I don't remember the teams. Which was 1985. Well, that's the old USFL. Great, great players. That's the one where Don had his team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the generals that you're trying to be... New Jersey generals? Try to get an autograph. Me? Yeah. Yeah, you I can autograph it for you, Brian Craig. Bring a Sharpie on that. <laughs> Listen, we'll... Yeah, all right, we'll take our break and be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Does anyone know if, if you committed fraud to get discharged, is there a statute of limitations on that? Does anyone know? There's no statute of limitation. So if you lied in the 60s, if you hired a doctor, it was the National Guard.
I'm so glad. I got papers on the way, too. Go to MyPillow.com and use our promo code KANE at checkout. K-A-N-E. And buy your MyPillow 2.0. Right now, buy one, get one free. You can also order by phone, toll free, 800-716-4879. 1-800-716-4879. No statute of limitations. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of things that do make sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I know. Training, I uh, had, I think the word was at the time, uh, too <laughs> Anti-Semitic <laughs> comment. <laughs> so all these guys, and then somebody wrote me up this letter, and the letter biscuits. So I went to see it. All right, we're back. I'm Brian Craig. Steve Kane is here. Oh, you know, Steve, they, the lowest prices ever on the My Pillow mattress toppers, as much as fifty percent off with our promo code Kane. Check, yeah, yeah, with our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E, as much as fifty percent off the My Pillow mattress toppers, plus free shipping because there's free shipping on orders of seventy-five dollars or more. I've been sleeping on the My Pillow mattress toppers for years now since they've had them. So, however long that Mike Lindell has had them. I've been sleeping on them. They are spectacular. It will change the way you sleep. Mattresses are like buying a car these days. Mattresses cost a lot of money. And, you know, in the old days, you used to be able to flip the mattress, right? So you'd have a mattress. It'd last like 10, 20 years. You'd just flip it. Then you'd flip it again. And, and the, no, the mattress companies caught on to that racket, and you can't flip mattresses anymore unless you want to sleep in that hole surrounded by wood. So if you have a lumpy, bumpy mattress or think you need a new mattress, get yourself a MyPillow mattress topper uh, uh, as much as 50% off and free shipping with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com. They come in all mattress sizes. You can also order by phone, 1-800-716-4879, 1-800-716-4879, promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. All right, now, uh, during the break, someone told me there's no statute of limitations on fraudulently getting discharges, and I pulled this up. Let me just play this, Steve, since we're talking about Larry David. Now, uh, Mike, I've not pre-screened this, if uh, so we may have to hit... Bang on the glass if I got to hit the dump button because this is Larry David talking and you never know what's going to come out of Larry David's mouth. But this is Larry David. <laughs> this is Larry David talking about how he got out of the army. And I, I just, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not accusing. But it, it's certainly a scummy thing. And I think this guy who's, who's getting all this attention for trashing Trump this week, we should put, you know, he thinks Trump's a criminal. He thinks Trump's all these things. I think we should put in context what kind of man he is. I know he makes us laugh. I think his shows are... I like Seinfeld. I, I, I've enjoyed Curb Your Enthusiasm. The Seinfeld reunion they did on Curb Your Enthusiasm, that was like Emmy award-winning stuff. But here's Larry David telling Conan O'Brien how he got out of the, uh, out of the Army. He's writing letters uh, for like $250. And so I went to see him and I talked to him for, uh, you know, 45 minutes and he wrote me up this letter and the letter basically said that I was crazy. And, uh, I took the letter and this is, I'm in for two years now. So I know all these people. And imagine coming to work and acting insane. Yeah. Which is what I did. I had the letter. <laughs> okay, so he, he, he got the letter. He paid $250, which was a lot of money back then. And now it buys you like a loaf of bread and half a gallon of milk. So he, got a, he paid a psychiatrist $250 to write him a letter that he was crazy. And then, yeah, and then he went back to the post and started acting crazy. Where's the major? Where's the major? I need to talk to the major. Yeah. So, hey, did it work? I, I saw friends. These are friends of mine. I saw friends. Only, I see in, only in the crowd of his friends. Yeah. 
But they think that the Rev Dodger goes funny. Yeah. Pointing and looking, what? Uh, pointing at me, what's he doing? What's with David? What, look at him, look at him. <laughs> A lot of things I okay, so and, and he gave the letter to the major, and the major said, okay, you're out of the army now, Larry David. You're out of the army. Go and make a billion dollars now in TV. You know, that is, he was in the National Guard or the Reserves, one or the other. I don't know which it was. But that is, that is draft dodging. Be, yeah, you go into the National Guard so you don't get drafted, right? So someone, someone went to Vietnam because of Larry David. And, you know, and, and that person may have died. Their name may be on the wall in D.C. Maybe not, but maybe. But certainly someone went to Vietnam in his place. Now, what I want to know is this guy who's all over the news saying vile, disgusting things about President Trump this week because of this interview we did on CNN with Chris Wallace, is, is, is that a, 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 a crime? Today, is it still a crime or is there a stat? Now, I was told during the break, there's no statute of limitations on such things. I don't know. Um, and I know that he's not going to be prosecuted. And it was everybody likes Larry David and all, and all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just here to tell you that um, most people that are Democrats, and I don't know if you'll agree with me with this or not, Steve. Most people that I've known that are Democrats in their adult life have something that's scummy in their past that makes them a Democrat, where they find acceptance. See, in Democrat circles, it, they laugh and think it's, it's funny that someone may have gone to Vietnam and died in your place. They think it's funny that you committed fraud to get out of the National Guard and, and, and these things. They think it's cool that you got three sugar babies uh, you're cheating on your wife with because you made all this money in Hollywood. They think it's cool. So most, or, or you had an abortion and now you're an advocate. Most people that are Democrats have some immorality in their past that is the driving force that makes them a Democrat. In my experience, and those of you out there that are um, veterans, um, I'd, I'd certainly like to hear how you feel, especially those of you that have, that have served in, in combat uh, areas. You know, Richie the bus driver is a Vietnam veteran. Those of you that served in Vietnam or elsewhere... Do you think Larry David's funny laughing that he paid a psychiatrist $250 to give him a fraudulent letter saying he was a psycho? You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, good morning. Long time no hear. Yeah, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, long time no hear. Oh, you, what are you, anonymous? That's your name? Long time no hear? That's your name? Is that your first and last name? Long time, your first name? No here, your middle and last name? See what my name is, as you already know. Jay from Jersey. Jay from Jersey. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Wow. I was just listening to you just now, talking about this guy being a... Larry David. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> but why would you say that when you know President Trump is a draft dodger? Really? It was proven back in 2016 when he was running for president. You know that. What did he do? What did he do? His father got him out <clears throat> of being, going to the army, whatever. Oh, I, you know, Jay, I'm so glad you called. So what do you suggest? Okay, okay. So let, okay. So s Jay, Jay, slow down, slow down. So let's assume for the conversation that, that what you said is true about President Trump in Vietnam. What are you suggesting be done about it? What do you suggest? What you tell them about the other man be done about it? Why bring up one and not the other? That's not an answer. That's another question. So you you brought up this accusation against the greatest president ever. What do you suggest? Exhibit. What do you suggest should happen to the person you were just talking about, Larry David? Well, see, with with what you said with President Trump is not true, and it's much. Leave it. You know good and well that he was a draft dodger. No. No, no. Listen, he may have gotten a deferment, but he didn't break any laws. Larry David is, com is confessing to a criminal... Excuse me. Larry David is confessing to a criminal act. President oh, really? President? When did President Trump say that he fraudulently got a deferment from the war in Vietnam? I missed... I'll play that. Tell me where it is. I'll play it. Uh, uh, right on the air, just like I did Larry David's confession. Every day. 
but you like to pretend like you don't know nothing to talk to. Don't know nothing means I know everything. Um, like, hold on. A lot of people got deferments. Like, you got a deferment, Steve, right? You, didn't you, get, you got a deferment, right? Good physical problems. Yeah, no, you got, you got a marriage deferment, which is another kind of problem, right? So yes. a, a deferment is not dodging. You understand? If you, like, if, if you get a deferment from, from, from the draft, that's not dodging the draft. Going to a doctor and paying him $250 to write a fraudulent doctor's note that you are insane and then giving that to the major, that is a, that's a crime. That's, dra that's not. Why are you cutting me off so I can't hear what you're saying? It's not that you can't hear. You don't want to hear what I'm saying. Oh, no, you're cutting me down so I can't hear what you're saying. You think I'm, I'm, I'm talking into a damn microphone. I'm talking into a microphone. I don't hear anything. Because you won't stop talking. Only on the radio, only one person can talk at a time or it sounds like mud on the radio. And you won't stop talking when I'm talking like I do when you're talking. So you cut me down. I don't cut you down. I mean, you may feel cut down because you're taking a stupid position. There's a difference between a deferment and committing fraud. Larry David confessed to a fraudulent action. Steve got a... Steve got a defer. Oh, no, no. If you have, if you have the audio of President Trump doing what Larry David did, saying I fraudulently got a deferment, so I was not sent to Vietnam, I will play that on the air right now. And everybody does it. It took me. It took me. Ex he, 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 they, it, excuse me. It took me six seconds to pull up Larry David saying that. Six seconds. That's your old partner that's sitting back there. He knows he heard it too, but you will. President Trump will give. Tell, no. If that were true, why would I let you say it multiple times? I think if President Trump is listening this morning, he's probably laughing at you. Hey Jay, I gotta, I gotta take a break. But thanks for the call. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great again. Serving homeowners for the last 100 years. All right, what else comes with it? 
this special offer. I'm going to show you that I've heard you a million times. Slomans will customize a system specific for your home and a personal installation. An LED touchscreen pad, motion detector for interior protection, 10 contacts, backup battery in case of power failure, and a lifetime warranty. So call Slomans today at 833 No, I got the, the, uh, I got the details of Trump, and I'm going to share it when we get back. Well, don't worry, I'll finish this thing up with Trump when we get back. All right, we're back. I'm Brian Craig, Steve Kane. All right, if you're on hold, stand by. Let me explain what happened with Trump and how it's different, okay? Because Trump did not, uh, the, the, the liberals have a lot of what you, you, Steve and I call liberal urban legends, right? Liberal urban legends. Climate change is a liberal urban legend. It's a fetus, not an unborn child in the womb. Liberal urban legend, all these things. And one of the liberal urban legends, there's many, but one of them is, Trump got a, a deferment from this doctor and got out of the war in Vietnam. Larry David, he joined the National Guard. Right? I think it was in New York. And that was a, what a lot of guys did to avoid going to Vietnam. There's a difference between, you know, and then he said to Conan O'Brien that he paid a doctor, a psychiatrist, medical doctor, $250 to write him a letter saying he was crazy, and then he went back to post and acted crazy. Where's the major? I got the letter. Where the major? And then he got out of the army. All right? You can pull up the whole interview with Conan O'Brien and listen to it. I heard the whole interview. And what um, Jay from Jersey said is, oh, Trump got a letter from a doctor, and he got out of the draft. That is not true. Okay? Uh, Trump, uh, there were uh, several types of deferments people could get. You got a marriage deferment. You, got, you were married, so you got a deferment from the draft. 
And a lot of people, while you were in college, that was a deferment, right? So while you were in college, you were not eligible to be drafted while you were in college, at least for a period of time. That's why so many liberals went on to get advanced degrees. And a lot of PhDs are liberal radicals because they stayed in college to avoid Vietnam. Yeah, student. So they stayed in college to avoid going to Vietnam. And we ended up with a lot of radical PhDs today. That's not what, and there's medical deferments, but President Trump, that's, he didn't do any of that. President Trump got the call and he showed up. This, and this uh, what I'm going to share with you is in the Florida Times Union, which is a newspaper out of Jacksonville, Florida, right here in Florida. Um, two months after college graduation on September 17th, 1968, President Trump reported for an armed forces physical examination. So this isn't going to some doctor like Larry David did and paying him off. He showed up at the, at the draft office for the physical, okay? Pre on September 17th, 1968, President Trump reported for an armed forces physical examination and was medically discharged or disqualified. Okay, now listen to this. September 17th, 1968, President Trump reported for an armed forces physical examination and was medically disqualified. This is according to a ledger from the Selective Service System draft board, not some doctor in a letter. So he went to the, to the draft board for the physical. The army doctor examined him and determined he was uh, uh, not eligible uh, for service. It wasn't some doctor that he and, and, and his dad paid off. It was the army. The army gave President Trump a physical examination and disqualified him, said he was not fit. Okay? So that's, that's, the, that's the, the rest of the story, as Par Harvey would say. No, if you got something better, I'm good to go, Steve. But we're not wasting any time. We're not wasting time. This is, this is important. This is, no, we're talking about President Trump. Uh, so, so don't let anyone tell you that President Trump dodged the draft or paid some doctor for a deferment. The U.S. Army physically examined President Trump and determined he was ineligible for military service. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? And it was because of his determination that he was able to push through, go to different specialists with different, he had to go through different tests to see if it would affect his service. And what I want to tell Jay is that, you know what, Trump may not have served back then, but boy, the service he has given this country. That is, is for sure. And, and I love all these, all these liberals, all of the, all these liberals called Vietnam veterans baby killers and war criminals. Now, to be an honorable American, you have to be a, one of these baby killer war criminals that they used to call them, that they used to spit on. Yes. You know, I right, appreciate, the, appreciate the call. Now, yesterday, President Trump, he had two great speeches, first in Michigan, then Wisconsin. And uh, this is from the, um, the speech with the police officers in Michigan. 11 days ago, right here in Kent County, a 25-year-old Michigan woman named Ruby Garcia, who has become a very well-known name, beautiful young woman, was savagely murdered by an illegal alien criminal under the Trump administration. This monster had been deported, thrown out of the country, he wasn't going to be able to come back because you just have to look at the charts. It was very, very hard to get in. But he came back, and uh, we threw him out of the country and crooked Joe Biden took him back and let him back in and let him stay in and he, he viciously killed Ruby. The illegal alien charged with Ruby's really heinous killing and he, this is somebody that had many, many arrests including for uh, some very bad crimes that he committed and he was set loose to roam our streets and in this case uh, set loose to roam in Michigan 
by politicians that are left and weak and stupid. On March 22nd, he shot 17-year-old Ruby. Actually, she was uh, a beautiful, beautiful young woman. Uh, Ruby Garcia was uh, shot multiple times with an <coughs> illegally obtained handgun. Her body was dumped on the side of a highway, left to die, actually. Had a little life left, left to die. And uh, Ruby passed away, and it's been a big story because it's so horrible. Some of these horrible stories, there's so many of them, you could go on for days, but some of them just, uh, they resonate so much more for whatever reason. They're all so horrible, and there's so many of them. Now Ruby's loved ones and community are left grieving for this incredible young woman, remembering what they called her. They said she had just this most contagious laughter, and when she walked into a room, she lit up that room. No. Oh. Wow. I mean, that's just awful. So, let me, I got to, I'll throw this out to you guys in the audience. We're coming up on a, on a break. This illegal that murdered this, this 17-year-old child, Trump deported him. Biden brought him back. Now she's dead. Isn't that like felony murder? Like, like Steve, like, like if you um, are driving the getaway car and the person in the store. Sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're, yeah, if you drive someone to rob a store and you're in the getaway car out on the curb, they go in and rob the store and kill someone, you get charged with felony murder. You're an accessory. You're an accessory to that murder. You get charged with felony murder. Trump deported this monster. Biden brought him back, and he killed a 17-year-old child. I know they want to say young woman. Child. She lost everything. She lost everything, her whole future. Because by he's got to be an accessory to that. I mean, what, what the hell? The, 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 the number one charge of a president is to protect the people of this country. And, and, and this is another person in this country, another young woman who's dead, as a direct result of Biden's actions. I mean, how many does it take before people say, you know, I, I can't vote for this guy? All right. We'll be right back. The cold, hard truth. Delivered morning six. All right, and it's time to check in with William Youngerman from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated with the Morning Gold and Precious Metals Report. William Youngerman, how are the metals starting off the day? Uh, metals uh, giving us a little bit of a pullback after yesterday's and the whole week's great gains. Uh, yesterday we saw gold trade in a range of $2,250 all the way up to $2,281. Closing out the day near the highs at $2,279 the ounce, up $28.80. Silver, the big gainer, and breaking out, uh, trading up to twenty six twenty one yesterday, closed up a dollar and two cents to twenty six dollars and eight cents on silver. Platinum gaining nineteen dollars at nine hundred and twenty two dollars after hitting a high of nine thirty nine, and palladium was down two dollars at nine eighty six. This morning we see a little bit of a pullback, <clears throat> uh, as we have often seen uh, starting off the days on gold when it's had a good a good previous day. Uh, overnight gold trading in a range of 2267 to a new record high of 2287. Right now at 2272, that's down seven dollars. Silver continuing continuing its push high, higher, twenty six dollars and thirty five cents up twenty seven cents right now. Overnight high twenty six dollars and fifty three cents. Platinum up another two dollars at nine twenty four, and palladium up two dollars at nine eighty eight. So gold is pushing towards that twenty three hundred dollar number which we had predicted last year. Wow. I mean, it's amazing. Now, yesterday you were talking about what a great buy uh, uh, platinum was. So today's a gold day. Uh, is there anything in particular in gold that you would recommend people pick up today? Yeah. Uh, kangaroos, Australia's Perth Mint kangaroos, excellent values. Also, the Royal Canadian Mint, uh, one-ounce maple leaves are uh, excellent value. We've got some sales on all these coins. 
So uh, mm-hmm. for premiums and quantity, and of course the gold bars are very reasonable also. Yeah, so you can call or stop in. William Eggman opens up at 10 a.m. His address, 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca, on the first floor of the Bank of America building, just east of US-1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road. Give him a call, 1-800-327-5010. one 800 Three two seven fifty ten, and if uh, and if you miss the address or the phone number, just go to his website. You can get them both there. WilliamYoungerman dot com. WilliamYoungerman dot com. All right, William Youngerman. We'll talk tomorrow. Hey, also, Brian, I might mention we've still got uh, uh, on sale the, the pre nineteen thirty three United States twenty dollar gold pieces at just three percent of. There. Let me just let me just slow down on that because pre thirty three gold is gold. Uh, th- these are sovereign American coins from the U S Mint that were in regular circulation as twenty dollars <laughs> prior to nineteen thirty three, and they they have a, co- a bit of a collectible value. And in the past, they've been pretty expensive. This is like some of the lowest prices ever on on pre thirty three gold, and it's very rare for you to recommend that. Uh, above other things, so the the price is uh, is price right. So you pre thirty three gold guys, stop by William Youngerman's. All right, William Youngerman. Again, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay, have a great day. All right, we'll be right back. Social justice warriors for breakfast. Now the Steve King Show is on the. All right, the phones are ringing. I'm gonna take some calls, Steve. Okay, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Once. Oh, there is. Yeah, what's your name? Didn't know it was me. Uh, Steve uh, in uh, Martin County, never Trumper Steve. Oh, never Trumper Steve, yes. Never was a Trumper Steve, yes. By the way, I'm neither a liberal nor a Democrat, which you've accused me of, no more so than the 20th okay. of uh, Republicans that did not vote for Trump during the Yeah, okay. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Other than you, what's on your mind? Okay. You packed a lot in the first five minutes of your show this morning, so I'm going to do a lightning round of uh, two of the uh, things you mentioned. Um, that Trump wants to make a Christian day on November 5th. He's getting very religious all of a sudden. And I haven't read the Bible lately. Certainly I'm not buying this Bible for $60. But I'm going to take a wild guess that God doesn't like sexual assaulters, which was he was adjudicated as being by a jury. In fact, the judge called it rape, uh, and he was. And, and I, All right, now slow, now slow, slow, slow down here, because I, you know, Martin County, you know, I, I love Martin County, even though you live in it. Um, and uh, we've got some good people from Martin County coming on our cruise in uh, 24 days. Um, so this is interesting. So. Um, when was President Trump arrested, charged with rape? I missed that. Arrested and charged with rape. It, uh, well, it, it was a civil matter. So was- oh, a civil, a civil court. Okay. So, so there's a civil rape. Uh, uh, um, uh, now, I lost faith in juries when O.J. Simpson was acquitted of two brutal murders. But uh, that's when I lost faith in, in liberal juries. So you're telling me that President Trump has never been arrested nor charged with rape. What is a civil rape? <laughs> What's a, I've heard of date rape. I've heard of forcible rape. I've heard of rape. What is a, what is, excuse me, excuse me. What is a, what is a, I asked you, no, I, I've been responding to yours and I asked you one that you've ignored, okay? I'm not your employee, all right? Could you please tell this audience, because I'm not familiar with this. I didn't go to law school. Either did Steve. What is a civil rape? <laughs> uh, no, let me, let me repeat what I have said. He was adjudicated as having committed sexual... What does that mean? What is, how do you adjudicate a sexual assault? That is- how do you... Adju- what, what is the... If, if you go and adjudicate, if somebody adjudicate, That sounds like the completion of a sexual act. If somebody adjudicates a sexual assault, what is that? Walk me through what that is. Uh, someone has adjudicated a sexual assault. What have they done? 
I wasn't there on... No, well, you're accusing him of something, and you and you want people to be aware of it. You you think the audience should know. So can you please explain to the audience in graphic detail, if somebody adjudicates a sexual assault, walk us through that action. Say that again? You heard. I'll say it again slower, okay? You And you want the audience to know about this. If someone has adjudicated a sexual assault, walk the audience through the action of adjudicating a sexual assault. They made a determination that a sexual assault occurred based on the definition under New York State law. Well, to me, sexual assault is you go up to a woman and you throw her down and you force yourself inside of her body. Okay? Okay. Like Bill Clinton did to Juanita Broderick. Or... Uh, or, or uh, Biden was accused of doing by that girl in the halls of the Senate when he penetrated her, okay? That's the definition. Some, some wackadoodle vague thing is not a sexual assault. Well, I don't, I don't want to argue the definition. I, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Next. Next. Go to, go to, your, next, go to your next topic. I'll give you one more. Which Trump, okay, which Trump went to? That's huh? What? What are you talking, Trump went to what? I, I lost you. Uh, the, uh, uh, he, he, he attended the wake for the uh, police officer in Long Island. Correct. And I have to ask, why did he also attend the uh, funeral of police officer Brian Sisnick? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, he doesn't have time to go to all the uh, funerals of, of uh, you know, l listen, Democrats kill cops, unfortunately, all the time. He doesn't have time to go to all of them. He doesn't have time to go to all the funerals, to answer your question. Those are in Washington. Those are right nearby. He was still president. So he should, so he should just go to funerals all over the place. What? He did what? He, who caused whose death? President Trump assisted in, in causing the death of Brian Sisnick. He said, come on down. It's going to be walked. No, that's not what he said. He said, peacefully, peacefully walk to the Capitol. Peacefully. He didn't say, go in there! He said, peacefully. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Oh, my goodness. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up. I'll see if I can pull it up in time before the end of the show. Thanks for your call. All right, let's go... You're on the air. What's your name? Where you got? By the way, if anybody else can explain in detail the act of adjudicating a sexual assault, I'm curious to hear that. Yes, I did. Yeah. But the fact is, you you, you got him nailed on this because that that makes a lot of that whole. Camp. Yeah, it sure does. Yep, absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Jake for Lauderdale. Hey, Jake. How are you today, guys? Good. Um, I'm, I, I'm the piece that you played about the g girl that was uh, slain and that Trump had talked about. Um, I, at the very tail end, he said now that he talked about it. Now it is up to Congress to confront and, uh, this egregious assault on our democracy. And after this, we're going to walk down... We're going to walk down, we're going to walk down, anyone you want, but I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol, and we're going to cheer on our senators and congressmen and women, and we're probably not... Well, I don't know. I don't know about that one, but I was talking... Listen, he doesn't have time to go to every funeral and talk to every person, and I'll tell you this, though... I, I, excuse me, excuse me. I'm talking to the audience. I'm not talking to. You. Um, in fact, I, I'm queuing something. I honestly, I'm queuing up something, and I'm almost out of time. And I didn't hear a damn thing you said. I have no idea what you were talking about. I was. I hope did I have to hit the dump button on there, Mike? I'm queuing up Trump at the Capitol. Um, but the the uh, the never Trumper guy that called in. I'm gonna uh, we can finish with what you're saying, call, and then we'll finish up with that. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. No, he did not talk to the family. So that was my 
Oh, okay. I, I didn't hear what the points were. I missed the whole thing. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? No, that's not true. That's not true. I just, no, th this, it, well, excuse me. The Selective Service Board, they, 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 had, they gave him a physical examination and he didn't pass it. But that's a real condition. That's a real thing. No, 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 no. He was, ex President Trump was, excuse me, President Trump was examined by an army doctor. That's not true. They, they didn't find no bone spurs. We don't know. Excuse me. We don't know what they found, actually, because those, but he went to an examination at the Selective Service Office. He was examined by the Army doctor, and the Army doctor medically disqualified him. It is. I know it's not. I know you don't want to believe it, but it's true. It is true. Well, then you didn't hear it that day. There, there is a, listen, hold on, ex excuse me, son. Ex excuse me something, excuse me. If you've ever been to a pep rally, you talk about fighting to win. There, there are words that have certain context that you know don't mean actually go and get physical. You know, sometimes, sometimes with these, no, it depends. It de well, it depends on. It, that's exactly right. And when liberals hear Trump say anything, they hear other things because you want to justify your anger towards him. No, he did not. He did not. He, he did not. He did not. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm waiting. I'm I'm waiting for the part of your conversation that's worthy of us responding. Yeah. Yeah. It was that was it before I even took the call. Oh my goodness. Well, we're out of time for today. The liberal jerk, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the uh, callers on hold stand by. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And if you hang on, you'll be first in line tomorrow morning. I'm Brian Craig. Steve Kane, of course, has been here. This is Florida's longest running radio show, the Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977, celebrating 47 years on the radio. And uh, tomorrow will be another exciting day. I didn't even get to half of my show prep. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And everyone else, like the video, okay? I will see you all later. Thanks for watching.